National Broadcasting Company presents the National Football League. Today, from Arrowhead Stadium, it's the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Brought to you by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. By the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. And by Murata Fax Machines, built for the most important business in the world, yours. An absolutely gorgeous November day at Arrowhead Stadium, Kansas City, where today the Bengals bring the number one offense in the National Football League in against the Chiefs' defense, which rates among the best in the NFL. Last week, against the Pittsburgh Steelers, Boomer Esiason on the second play of the game threw a strike to Eddie Brown that went 86 yards for a touchdown as Brown had a career day with over 200 yards receiving and the Bengals destroyed the Pittsburgh defense. Running back James Brooks of Cincinnati leads the National Football League averaging almost 5.5 yards a carry as the Bengals come in averaging almost 30 points a game. Good afternoon, everyone. Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy. A great day in Kansas City. The form chart would indicate the 8-2 Bengals should have no problem today against a Kansas City team that's won just one game, lost eight, and tied one. But Trump, the Chiefs have been in every game, and their defense is very good. Boomer size is going to be tested by that defense. Yeah, I, Don, I do believe when you look at the personality of the Cincinnati Bengals, you have to go to Boomer Esiason. If his numbers continue through 1988, he's the league's most valuable player. His 20 touchdowns, his yards, his average per completion have been absolutely phenomenal. And this football team, this Cincinnati football team, seems to ride totally on the shoulders of Boomer Esiason. The last time the Bengals were in this spot, Playing a team that they should beat, they fell on their face against the New England Patriots, and it's basically because Boomer Esiason had a horrible day. So there's a great deal of pressure, not only on Boomer Esiason, but this team. They should beat Kansas City, and frankly, it should be easy. That's a difficult game to win. Well, Kansas City beat the stuffing out of Cincinnati in the preseason. Uh, they're changing pitchers today. The Kansas City Chiefs looking for offense. They'll go to Steve DeBerg trying to generate some touchdowns. While Cincinnati scores all the time, Trump, Kansas City can't score at all. Uh, Steve DeBerg quarterback the Chiefs when they won their only game that win against Denver here in Kansas City. And the thing about Steve DeBerg is that he's produced 10 touchdowns of the 11 the Kansas City Chiefs have scored. So Frank Gans going with what he thinks is a hotter quarterback. DeBerg has been out of the lineup the last several weeks just because he was beat up. There is Frank Gans as the Cincinnati Bengals break their huddle around Sam White. The AFC Central Division shows the Bengals, despite a brilliant 8-2 record, just one game up on Houston. And the Cleveland Browns are two games back, but coming on, as Cincinnati will attest to. And Pittsburgh bringing up the rear right now, a 2-8 and eight team. With three winning records in the AFC Central, like it was in the late 70s, early 80s, when it was probably the best division in the American Conference. The Bengals will be kicking off to start the game. Sam White, now in his fifth year as head coach of Cincinnati, that route win over the Steelers last weekend brought his career record to one over 500 as Bengals coach. Don, one thing about this football stadium, this stadium has not been kind to Cincinnati. They played here three times in the regular season since 1980 and won only. They haven't won at all here. They won one time in the exhibition season, I do believe, but no wins in the regular season. So this is a very tough place for Cincinnati to win. Can't tell you why. It's AstroTurf. Cincinnati's generally used to that, but this is generally also a very windy stadium. Bengals and the Chiefs hooked up last season at Cincinnati. It was an overtime game won by the Bengals, 30-27. to 27. This kickoff is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. Lee Johnson is ready to kick it off for Cincinnati. Paul Palmer and Kenny Gamble are back deep now. And knuckleball kicked down, and the rookie from Colgate, Kenny Gamble, takes it on the one hop and downs the ball, and it'll come out to the 20, where the Chiefs will go first and 10. There's Steve DeBerg coming out of quarterback, now in his 12th year from San Jose State. Okoye, the big back from Nigeria, his power runner, Paul Palmer from Temple, his breakaway runner. Carson and Page are two standout wide receivers, but the Chiefs have been unable to get the ball deep as they have in the past. Their offensive line has been a major problem. 
given up 38 sacks so far this year. Alt and Eatman have actually switched around now. Eatman's going to open at left tackle. They've made adjustments up to the last minute. In their offensive line, this is a team hit hard by injuries, where Cincinnati's been a healthy ball club from the outset. Downfield throw, and there's an open man. Stephon Page comes off the flank and picks it across the 40-yard line. And so right away, DeBerg comes out firing and hits a big throw. Gain on the play of 22 yards as you look at the defensive front of Cincinnati. McClendon, Crumry, and Scow. Linebackers starting today for the Cincinnati Bengals. Leon White and Reggie Williams, the outside backers. Carl Zander and Joe Kelly inside. Billups and Thomas are at the corners. Bolcher and Wilcraft are the safety. Defense has given up a lot of yards and made a lot of big plays. Here's a pitch back to Palmer on first down. The Bengals shut him down. No gain as he rushes out to the 42-yard line, the line of scrimmage. Rumry was on the stop. Trump? One of the problems the Kansas City Chiefs have is a tremendous imbalance in their offense. Most of their first downs come passing. They get very little running yardage. Paul Palmer, I believe, and the insertion of Steve DeBerg as quarterback that's a combination that's produced three 100-yard receiving days. Palmer ran that ball just kind of as a bluff. I would look to see Kansas City throw the ball a lot in any situation. Third and one, second and long, anything. This is second and nine where they have it spotted. DeBerg looking long again. A man is open, and Stefan Page again is the receiver down to the 40-yard line. The Chiefs, who've had difficulty getting touchdowns, Come out throwing the ball deep. Stefan Page with 40 yards on two catches now. That was good for 18. Nice crossing pattern. Good pass protection by the Chiefs offensive line for DeBerg. DeBerg puts it right in between two defenders, Wilcox and also Eric Thomas. And the offense of Kansas City moving very quickly down the field here. Last week at Denver, the Chiefs drove the ball 78 yards in the opening drive, only to have Kenny throw an interception to the Broncos won. Palmer, nothing there. Great hit by the Bengals. Jim Scow, the defensive end from Nebraska, shot the gap, made a head-on hit, and Xander was also on the play. So again, it comes up second and long for the Chiefs. It'll be second down and 11. At some point, though, teams begin to catch on to what Kansas City's doing. They've had a grand total of three, count them, three 100-yard rushing days since 1981. Seven years. Two of them last year and one in 85 by Mike Pruitt. So at some point, defenses just disregard the run and start playing only the pass. Okoye, the big bat, rolls straight ahead. He takes it at the Bengals, and he's still running as he comes inside the 30 and down to the 24-yard line. And so on uh, second and 11, a uh, run is good ahead for about 15 yards. Nice trap up the front. It's a draw to Okoye at 263 pounds. He breaks one tackle right there. David Fulcher, 33, can't hang on to him. And Fulcher is a very good tackler. Finally dragged down by 57, Reggie Williams. Nice lead block by Paul Palmer. Yeah, he screened Joe Kelly off the play. Back to the run they go, and this time it's Palmer who only weighs about 185, and he takes it down to the 22-yard line. With the Bengals find nose tackle, Crumry makes the stop. In the last six games, Kansas City has scored only five touchdowns. In the last six games, the Cincinnati Bengals have scored 27 touchdowns. Big matchup today for the Kansas City offense and the Bengals defense is Crumry, 69 on the center. Jerry Ferry, who is making his first start as a Kansas City Chief. They took out Tom Baugh. Ferry picked up as a free agent from the Philadelphia Eagles, and he's got his hands full today with Tim Crumry. Consider one of the best nose tackles in the game. Tenth round draft choice out of Wisconsin at Madison. Crumry enters the line. Now to Palmer looking for room to go on a second down and seven play. And Paul Palmer is ahead inside the 20-yard line. He's down to about the 18. Sure shot range for one of the best kickers in the league if they don't convert this third down. This has been a major problem, Trump. Third down for the Chiefs. Let's look at that second down run. Again, Crumry. Very does a pretty good job of shoving Crumry out of the way, but Crumry very active along the line of scrimmage. The only nose tackle to lead his team in tackles the last three straight years. Former college wrestler and a very good job of getting off blockers. You're right. This is where Kansas City struggles. These Maybe third down. Way under 40%. This is third down and four. 
Berg setting in the shotgun. He gets some time. He could have run it in, but he goes to the throw, and it's Aaron. He had plenty of room to run for the first down, but elected to throw the ball, and so the chief drive stalls. And now Lowry comes out, an absolutely superior field goal kicker, has hit 14 of 15 this season. Carson was the intended receiver. It's hard to tell by our pictures, but the wind is really in the face of Kansas City, and that ball seemed to drop when DeBerg threw it out there to the sideline. Well, I talked to Lowry Trump before the game, asked him about the wind. He said it's very tricky. Field goals, particularly long ones, you're going to really have to play the wind. He is an expert at it, a 37-yarder. This guy was a Cincinnati Bengal for two weeks, cut by Frank Gans. The field goal is up, and it is through the upright. So he played the win, and he had the range. And Nick Lowry puts the first points up as the underdog Chiefs take a 3 to nothing lead. A good day to sit up high in the stands and root for the Chiefs. I don't know if I can hear you from up there, but... Always nice to come to a game with friends, though, you know, and That's right. talk over old times. Convivial afternoon here in the ball yard. <laughs> 37-yard field goal by Nick Lowry. Open the scoring today after the opening drive by Kansas City. Chicago Bears with Mike Ditka on the sideline at RFK Stadium has seen his Bears take a 7-0 lead. He's on the sideline? Yeah. After a heart attack nine days ago? 11 days. And who's counting? I'm sure his doctor is. Nick Lowry ready to kick it off. He has now hit on 15 of 16 field goal tries this season. It's a high spinner into the wind. A short kick taken by Stanford Jennings to the Bengals. He's across the 20 and covers the ball with both arms, takes it to the 26-yard line. Greg Hill was down to make the tackle for Kansas City. Now we look at the high-power offense of the Cincinnati Bengals, led by quarterback Boomer Esiason. James Brooks averaging those 5.4 yards a carry, number one NFL and per carry average. Icky Woods, the rookie from UNLV, another fine back. McGee and Eddie Brown, super fast. They're open all the time, it seems. And Rodney Holman, a very underrated and capable tight end. And the offensive line is probably the best in football, maybe in some years. With these skill position players, time to throw like Isaiason has now. And they're going to make connections. Just almost intercepted. Albert Lewis on the fly, had an open track to the end zone, and he picked it off. And out pattern to Eddie Brown, and Albert Lewis had a direct read and a timed it just right. Then he ran into the guy holding up the yard marker. Reminds me of Bubba Smith. Remember when he tore up his knee? Lewis made a great defensive play. The linebacker out underneath this is Andy Hawkins. You see him bump Eddie Brown, and then Lewis comes from nowhere. Brown waits on the ball, almost six points, and then watch him hit the yard marker. Bubba Smith, back in the 70s, absolutely tore up his knee because that yard marker was not put down on the ground. Let's see where he hits what. He's trying to get out of the way. Well, he hit his leg. I thought those were supposed to be breakable now. I'm not so sure he didn't break it. Some top players are already out of their secondary. Cornerback Kevin Ross and former Pro Bowl safety Lloyd Burris. And now Lewis has a problem. A review of the end of this play. Kevin Ross has that ball bounce off his chest. And then he hits the yard markers. The gentleman holding him really didn't see Ross coming at all. But he does appear to be all right, although he hit his knee. Kansas City Chiefs don't need another defensive back hurt. There's Ross. He's up. Uh, excuse me, Albert Lewis. I got their guy. I'm saying Kevin Ross, and Kevin Ross is right there. He's out of the ball game already. Now the Bengals go second down and ten. They're trailing three nothing. Here's a hand up that goes to James Brooks with those sliding quick moves. He darts ahead, top to the 31-yard line. A gain on the play of about five. On Albert Lewis back in the ball game at corner. So Kansas City's happy about that. Interesting thing about this KC defense today, Neil Smith and Mike Stensrud have flopped in. First time either's played in those spots. Yeah, Neil Smith is lining up at the right side as of right now. There are the linebackers, Hackett and Del Rio, two tough inside backers. And the safety, yeah, strong safety, is a rookie. Kevin Porter in for a pro bowler. Lloyd Burris has been out four weeks now with a knee injury. Looks like you were going down the side. 
Ryerson, deep drop on third and five, and he swings it out to Tim McGee. Good for a Bengal first down as he's out to the 41-yard line. Angelo snipes an outside linebacker made the play, but again, that line gives Asias and all the time in the world to scan downfield. Kansas City's defense runs about 85 or 90 percent zone. And when you run motion, it doesn't affect what the, anybody in the zone except the drops of the zone. And if the quarterback has time, that allows those linebackers to drop deeper and deeper, and you find a great many wide receivers and running backs open underneath the coverage. Albert Lewis and J.C. Pierce in the corner. Kevin Porter and all pro Duran Cherry the safety. Ryerson with a quick throw. It goes to tight end Jim Riggs. And on a first and ten play, Riggs is out to the 49-yard line, a gain of over eight yards. Knockdown made by J.C. Pearson as the Bengals with all that diversity in their arsenal come at you a lot of different ways. Leading the NFL in yardage with 399 a game and scoring with 39 touchdowns. That's the one stat that blows my mind. The Rams are in second place with 32 touchdowns scored. Kansas City has 11 offensive touchdowns scored. Chiefs took it down the field after the opening kickoff, and Lowry hit a 37-yard field goal. That's how it stands. KC leading 3-0. Nicky Woods, the rookie, taking on tacklers and banging into people as on a second and short. He busts ahead for a gain of almost 10 yards and a first down. Kevin Porter, one of the safeties, knocked him down, a rookie from Auburn. Chiefs are learning a new defensive scheme. Rod Rust came from New England to Kansas City this year. And one of the things Rod Rust has always taught is to try to pick that ball out of the ball carrier's hand, strip him, just grab for the end, knock it down, get the turnover. Kevin Porter making the tackle there. He holds up Icky Woods and other, tries are, other guys are trying to knock it away. Very characteristic of a Rod Rust defense. Bengals go play fake, and here's McGee. a long ball. McGee's out there, but it's way overthrown as that wind picked it up and took it far beyond the receiver. As Iason has hit for 20 touchdown throws this season and just under 2,500 yards passing in 10 games. Bengals, as we mentioned, with 27 touchdowns in their last six games, 39 for the season. Last week, he had almost a perfect day, excepting those two interceptions as the Bengals absolutely destroyed the Steelers. Now, here's a big down, long yardage, second and 10. 3-0 Kansas City in the first quarter. Dyson gets time. He makes a connection with Rodney Holman, who's got the first down and plenty more as Holman's out of bounds at the 20. Again, Trump, it looked like the ball tailed up a little bit on Esiason, but Holman went up to bring it down. When it's your back, the ball does tend to carry, but Rodney Holman, a very athletic receiver, goes up and gets it. Ends up being a 22-yard pickup. Chiefs came with a blitz. They're not known as a blitzing team, but just as Esiason gets this ball off, he gets hit by Jack Del Rio, number 50, and that might cause the ball to sail a little bit, too. James Brooks, 21, started the block, but that's a great catch by Rodney Holman. So the Bengals now have the ball at the 19-yard line of Kansas City. Kansas City. Mickey Woods is the deep back. Briggs goes in motion and Woods takes it up the middle, cutting back, and he's down inside the 15-yard line. A gain of close to five. Be second down and about five for Cincinnati. As you look at the scoreboard, Mike Tomzak on a one-yard run scored the Bears touchdown. Gary Anderson hit a field goal for the Steelers from 52 yards out. As Pittsburgh is now leading, as you see, Philadelphia 3-0. Don, Kansas City, we mentioned on offense their inability to run the ball. They also have a great difficulty stopping the, ball, the, the run. They're, average, they're allowing 154 yards rushing per game to this point in the season. They're 27th in the NFL in defense against the run. James Brooks behind blockers, turns the corner. He's inside the five, and James Brooks is very close to a first down. A second and five carry. He got the nose of the ball very close to where he had to be. Now, Don, watch this defensive line of Kansas City. I think one of its real problems is how high they play. You see Neil Smith, 90. The offensive tackle, Anthony Munoz, is right up in his chest. When you play in the NFL, these offensive tackles and guards are so big and strong now that if you give him your chest to hit, they'll park you. you got to take him on with your shoulder pad so you can slip him. 
And so far, Neil Smith, who I think is going to be a great player for Kansas City, can't get over that college tendency to stand up. This is the tenth play of the drive coming up now. First and goal for Cincinnati. Up the middle goes Delbert, Elbert, Dickey Woods, and he's down close to the goal line. And Dickey Woods is in, and so the Bengals with the biggest play on that drive, the high catch by Rodney Holman for the first down. And it looked to be an overthrown ball, and it went for 22 yards, and the Bengals subsequently take it in with the rookie, Icky Woods, scoring his ninth touchdown of the season. Once again, watch those defensive linemen stand right up. Leonard Griffin, 98, 91 Baldinger. When you do that, you're giving a great advantage to the offensive line because they got the entire chest and stomach to hit. There's no way in the world you can stop them. Jim Breach. Ready to try the point after now as Woods is congratulated on the sideline. And here is the extra point up and good. And with 6.25 to play in the first quarter, the Bengals have gone right down the field to take the lead. 7-3, to three, they'll kick it off in a moment. It is now 7-3. to three. Cincinnati takes the lead for the first time as the Bengal offense looking as good as advertised. Number one in the NFL, 74 yards on 10 plays. Their 40th touchdown. That's a remarkable figure when you consider last year they had great difficulty scoring, but the big play in that drive, the catch by Rodney Holman overthrown. He goes up to get it. It continues the drive for Cincinnati, and then they basically run it in from there. Very windy now. Gusts are picking up as the ball is blown off the tee for Lee Johnson. He'll kick it off for the Bengals again. Back deep, Paul Palmer and Kenny Gamble. Eric Thomas is going to hold the ball now for Lee Johnson. Booms it with the left foot and really puts a charge into it. That won't come back. And so the Kansas City Chiefs will start again on their... 20-yard line, first down and 10. First time Chiefs had the ball, DeBerg had no problem finding receivers open. This guy has preceded a great list of quarterbacks all over the place. He was there with Montana and San Francisco prior to Elway going to Denver, prior to Testaverde going to Tampa. And when he got here in Kansas City, he says, I guarantee you, Troy Aikman will be here next year. <laughs> Right. He also had Steve Young he had to contend with in Tampa Bay. <laughs> he is like the forerunner of the number one pick coming in. Pitch back. Paul Palmer turns the corner, but there's not much there as the Bengals do a good job stringing it out. Carl Zander, number 91, taking it across laterally and getting the block to make the knockdown. This Bengal defense, I think, Primarily because of Tim Crumry's play in the middle. You almost always have to put two guys on Tim Crumry or he makes the play, and that allows the linebacker, the middle linebacker, 91 Carl Zander, to get to the outside without even being touched to make the tackle for no gain. Phillips is up tight now on Stefan Page, who burned him twice for long, catches in that opening drive. One of 22, one of 18 yards. pattern to Palmer who makes the turn a great block and Palmer's in open field one man with a play on him and Ray Horton gets him and brings him down that the Chiefs with a lot more explosion in their offense hit Palmer who was in motion coming across with a perfect lead throw by DeBerg it's a 42 yard gain good pass protection by the Chiefs offensive line Jim Crumry the nose tackle along with Eddie Edwards 73 Jim Scow 70 cannot get to DeBerg Kansas City uses Palmer almost as a wide receiver. He is their leading receiver. And at great foot speed, excellent block downfield, ends up being a 44, 42-yard game. Now Herman Hurd's in the backfield, along with Christian Okoye. Okoye, the up back, first and 10 from the 39. 7-3 Cincinnati. Herman Hurd, who's been running well this year, the few times he's gotten the ball, averaging almost 4.4 a carry. He's knocked down by Bengal linebacker Leon White. DeBerg Trump is 2-1 against the Bengals' career as a quarterback. He was 1-0 when he quarterbacked the 49ers to a win over Cincinnati. And at that time, White was his quarterback coach with the 49ers. He was 1-1 with Denver. I, uh, the thing I like about DeBerg is that he hangs on to the football. 
Uh, he gets sacked a lot, but he gets sacked because he hangs on and waits for that receiver to open. He's not had that bad a year. A 73 quarterback rating, 10 TD throws, 10 interceptions. Has completed 54%. Looking again. Throw and Herman Hurd somehow catches the ball on second down and seven. Good for a gain of only about three. Joe Kelly was right with Herman Hurd. Brings up third down as a package of players comes in for each side. Kansas City coming into this ball game just converting about 37 percent of their third down. And if you don't con convert a third down Frank Gans is aware of the problem too. A loss of a third down conversion basically comes out to about 40 yards 20 you don't get on the next four plays you run and 20 you give to your opponent because you can't convert the third down. Chiefs going with double wide sets to either side. That's Emil Harry going in motion as the bird steps in the shotgun, stands in, makes a throw. And the ball is caught at the 21 yard line by Emil Harry, a free agent from Stanford who has really been coming on in the recent weeks. That was a receiver catch all the way. The throw was a bit long. But the Chiefs make it work for a 12-yard gain on third down and a first down. This is a fantastic catch. He leaves the ground and hangs on to it before he hits the ground. 22, Eric Thomas is the man in coverage. Steve DeBerg realizes he kind of stretches out the receiver, but so far the patterns that have worked, crossing patterns by Kansas City. Crossing patterns have beaten the coverage. Now this is where the Chiefs have stalled so many times in the scoring zone. When they get down close, they can't close the sale and get it in. And it's the field goal prize. As Palmer runs, turns it upfield, and Paul Palmer taking on some big people at 185 pounds is ahead for a gain of about four. A reminder to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. From Ryan Leon White were the tacklers for the Bengals. We just saw that graphic 14 points in the first quarter includes the three they scored already today. 11 points in 10 games in the first quarter for Kansas City. The bird though has their offense looking a lot sharper at least in the early going. A lot of different looks The former Cincinnati assistant George Sefcik is now the offensive coordinator here at Kansas City. Play fake, big play, but he skips the linebacker, makes the throw on a fine defensive play. Coming up to knock the ball down was Solomon Wilcox, the free safety. Leon White got a little bit of pressure on DeBerg and then held it up and allowed Wilcox to get over there and knock the ball away. And check the scoreboard again. Steelers now up 10-0 as Lewis Lips just threw to Merrill Hodge. Play. Watch Leon White on the outside. Just destroys the timing of the pattern ever so slightly. Then Wilcox, 41, able to get his hand in there in front of the tight end. Now it's third down and about seven. Too much on it. And again, the Kansas City Chiefs cannot convert the third down down close, and they send their field goal kicker back out. Nick Lowry, who hit from 37 yards in his opening try, will try another fairly long field goal attempt. Pressure this time from up front by David Grant and Jason Buck. And the one time Kansas City needs just a little bit extra time to allow that pattern to open, the offensive line can't give them to him. And that's two times now inside the 25 that the Chiefs come away with at least one field goal and now an attempt. After hitting a 37-yard to open the story, Lowry will try a 35-yard. Bill Kenny hits the holder, hits down the way, and he's right there again. So Lowry hits field goals after two sustained drives, but again, Kansas City unable to convert for a touchdown. The Bengals still lead. Coach Gans looking to improve that 5-19 and one record, but. This is not a team, as you pointed out, Trump has been getting blown out. It's a team that's in every game every week. It's unbelievable. They've lost six games by less than a touchdown, and all week, Gans was likening his Chiefs to the Bengals a year ago when they Absolutely lost seven correct. games by less than a touchdown. If anything, that's their inspiration for the rest of this year. And for Jennings, runs back the kickoff for the Bengals. He's out to the 23-yard line. 
Angelo Snipes, number 52, made the stop after an 18-yard kickoff return, and here comes Boomer Esiason back out to run the NFL's number one offense, which looked every bit the part in that opening drive. 74 yards on 10th plays. Certainly safe to say that this team has a great many offensive weapons. One they really have not used in 1988 so far has been Chris Collinsworth. He's in there now. Chris Collinsworth is wide to the right at the top of your screen. Eddie Brown is the slot back inside him. James Brooks makes the turn, and James Brooks bangs and hits to the 28-yard line. A gain on the play of about four. On a first and ten carry, Bruce Reimers, a 295-pound guard, was out in front of him. Again, I mentioned how high the defensive linemen of this team get up. Watch Neil Smith. He's cut down by Rodney Holman, 82. This is a, an old Green Bay Packer power sweep. Both guards pull. You cut down that defensive end. And Brooks picks up about six or seven. Second down coming up. Second and five for the Bengals who lead the game seven to six. Throwing a catch to a wide open receiver. It's a first down, and James Brooks is out to the 44 yard line. Leonard Griffin knocked him down. Chiefs do a great job, Don, if nothing else on this defense, of not allowing the big long play. That was a 15 yard pickup by James Brooks, but basically about a nine yard completion, and he runs for the other six. These defensive backs have, for the last four years of Kansas City, been one of the best defensive backfields you'll find in the NFL. Missed tackle by Jack Del Rio allows the other six or eight yard pickup. First down Bengals. Chiefs despite that poor record are ninth in the entire NFL in overall defense. Second against the pass as Icky Woods who scored the game's only touchdown runs it to midfield on a first and ten play. Gain of about seven on the play as the knockdown was made by the leading tackler for the Chiefs Dino Hackett. This young man out of Nevada, Las Vegas, has been a nice find for Cincinnati. Already scored nine touchdowns with his one today. James Brooks also has nine. He'll be trying to get more as the game wears on. Traveling party in from Cincinnati. Back to Bengals. Very unusual. <laughs> this team normally doesn't attract a lot of fans around the rest of the country, but with an 8-2 start, everyone is... On the Bengals bandwagon, they're now beginning to call Riverfront Stadium the jungle. The Astrodome is the house of pain. <laughs> Riverfront Stadium is the jungle. How's the, the touchdowns? Look the time of possession for the Chiefs. Very impressive in that first quarter. This team averages in a to this point in his first 10 games about 26 minutes worth of ball possession there. There's the reference to Riverfront Stadium, the jungle. Chiefs allowed Trump only 166 points in the first 10 games. Only three teams, big winners, Chicago, Cleveland, and Buffalo have allowed fewer. Second down and three, cutting up for the Bengals as Boomer Esiason hands off to Icky Woods, and he slices up, and inside the 45-yard line, it's a first down for the Bengals as he's down to the Kansas City 43, where Jack Del Rio knocked him down. Now, Don, to this point, the defensive line of Kansas City has been no factor whatsoever. They're not even slowing down the running backs at the line of scrimmage. That defensive line has got to do a better job of at least making the running back uh, veer from his course. These guys are running exactly where the play is designed, and there's nobody in their way. Those numbers are wrong on the Cincinnati. Those guys average much closer to 300 pounds. That is the uh, testimony of the managed coaches from Jim McNally. Here's a long ball to Eddie Brown, and it's intercepted. Durant Cherry. by Duran Cherry. The consensus all-pro with his seventh interception of the season. And the 11th turnover he's been a part of. He's also recovered four fumbles. Ball intended for Eddie Brown and Cherry playing that free safety. One of the best receivers you'll find in the game. Good play-action fake. Fools everybody but Duran Cherry and Albert Lewis. And Cherry doesn't miss opportunities. When that ball gets close, this kid was brought into Kansas City as a punter and turns out to be probably this team's greatest free safety. Watch him go up for this ball. Hangs on to it. First turnover of the day, Kansas City gets it. 
Five Boy. straight years, he's been a first-team All-Pro player on Jerry. Don, that ball should not have been thrown. The play-action fake did not hold Deron Cherry at the line of scrimmage. Bengals are excellent to play fake. The way their linemen come off the ball, you can't tell what the play is. They keep those defenses guessing. Run and pass all looks the same at its inception. Wife, please, coach. And at that time, Deron Cherry with a spectacular pickoff of Esiason, the 11th interception he's thrown. Versus 20 TD throws, and now DeBerg tries to get the Chiefs out of a hole going to the run. First down, Carey is across the 10-yard line, out to about the 12, where Joe Kelly made the tackle with Carl Zander. Herman Hurd was the ball carrier. Steve DeBerg in his 12th year from San Jose State. He's 6'3", 216 pounds. One of the things that Gans likes about DeBerg is that he's converted 46% of his third downs to first downs. Steve Kenny had been converting just 22% of his third downs to first downs. Maybe his biggest asset at the present time, the Chiefs players respond better to DeBerg than they do to Kenny. They lost confidence in Kennedy, and with, and with reason, he couldn't do anything. Here's a long ball downfield on the dead run, unable to get to it is Carlos Carson. DeBerg was about a foot short of where he had to be, and Carson might have gone the distance. Foot long from where long, he might have been, long. and that may be the win. In with the win, that ball just carries a little bit. And at the line of scrimmage, Jason Buck. He's working on 75. Irv Eatman. Eatman does a great job of making Jason Buck totally out of the play. And this ball just slightly overthrown. With the win, you got to use a touch on that ball, and at times it's very difficult even for a veteran quarterback. Kansas City trying to break a losing streak that has now reached five straight games. Big third down play, third down and six. DeBerg stands in. He throws to Palmer, and the Bengals are there to cut him down a yard short of where he had to go. Barney Bussey, an extra defensive back, holding position and making the stop on a guy very hard to hit in the open field. Game clock down to 13 minutes and running here in the first half. It's a 7-6 game Cincinnati, and the Bengals could get very good field position now. Goodburn, the punter, last week averaged 55 yards a punt. They are going to measure, and the fans in Arrowhead Stadium here are yelling and screaming that the Chiefs should go for it. When this is one of the worst running, running games in the league, they've changed their mind. The offense going back on the field. 1-8-1, you got to do whatever you can do, and they're... You're right. They're going to go right at the Bengals. Poye. Maybe, though, you just send your offense out there to try to draw them outside, offside. With the win, another five yards is not going to make that much difference in the punt. This has got to work for Frank Ann's. Good point, Trump, because if they don't make it and the Bengals take it in with the way this team does not produce touchdowns, the Bengals could have a lock on it early. They're going for it. Okoye is the fullback. Watch him. 255. He weighs the quarterback. Takes it. He's there. Steve DeBerg calls his own number and gets behind Jerry Fury, a center. It's a first down, and the Kansas City following us up and cheering as we go to New York to Bob Pastors. Bob? That's right, Don, and let's get to some real excitement. A little episode in Green Bay, a fan looking to show his displeasure with the Packers brought a turkey to Lambeau Field. The gobbler gets loose, and now he's gobbling up yardage across midfield, makes a move to the sideline. He's too quick for Ron Hallstrom of the Packers, and he darts out of bounds to stop the clock. An amazing moment in Green Bay. Don? Could be a Green Bay highlight the way their year's been going. Here's Herman Hurd making the turn out on a first down carry. He doesn't get much. Bengals doing a good job shutting down the run. You know, it's interesting, Trump. The Bengals with an 8-2 and two record, second best mark in the NFL. But really, they've been a 500 team the last month. They started off 6-0, and and they're 2-2 two and two over the last four games. And those two losses, both on the road. They lost to New England, and they lose to Cleveland. So this is a team that has certainly produced a lot of points, but most of them have come at home. And celebration with the quarterback sneak for the first down. Second down and six arises now for Kansas City. Bengals lead the game 7-6, second quarter. 
Okoye takes it at the Bengals, and he doesn't get much at all. Out to the 25-yard line. And that's going to bring up third down and about five. As extra receivers come on the field now, Palmer's back in, and so is Emil Harry, who you remember caught that ball over the middle for a first down on the opening field goal drive. Chiefs have given up an awful lot of sacks this year so far, too. The quarterbacks have not been very well protected, giving up 36 sacks. But today, Frank Yans and George Sefcik going for the short patterns. So it's very difficult to get to that quarterback. You see that third down conversion. That is the major problem that Kansas City has had this season. One for four today on third down conversion. That quarterback sneak on fourth down. Bird brings Carlos Carson in motion. Bird takes a look, gets some time, stands in, throwing a catch. It's a first down for the Chiefs out to the 33-yard line. Carlos Carson made the play, coming in motion. He turned out on Eric Thomas, the right corner. It is good for a gain of about seven yards and a first down for the Chiefs. Nice pattern run by Carlos Carson, too. Thomas appeared to stop in his, in his back pedal, and that's when Carson broke to the outside and once again to Berg with great time to throw. No real pressure. Eatman pushes Jason Buck to the outside. Carson standing there to make the completion. Frank Gans believes that this team needs very little inspiration to get over the hump. Maybe that fourth down conversion today is the one thing. It sure energized the fans here at Three Rivers. Uh, let's make that Arrowhead. Arrowhead Stadium. They're all ball yards. But right now, the incomplete pass on a first and ten play. As they tried to set the screen, didn't go. Big rush was put on on the play by Cincinnati. Tim Crumry again coming over Fury the center. The center slips and looking for, he lets the defensive lineman go and Crumry gets to DeBerg and DeBerg basically has to throw it away. And, oh, there'll be a bruise on his back there. See if we can pick up who the screen man is supposed to be. I don't see anybody over there. Play did not work from beginning to end. 9.49 to play, first half. Bengals lead the Chiefs 7 to 6. Second down and 10. The Bird takes a drop. They give him time. Home run ball, but again, way too much on it. He had a receiver with a step on the defense in Emil Harry. Kittrick Taylor was also running a deep pattern. But again, as Boomer Esiason did earlier going to that end of the field, it was overthrown with the wind at their back. Now we got 9.43 to go in the second quarter. We haven't had a flag yet, have we? I don't think so. No penalties? Teams basically going up and down the field. Now here's a big conversion now. There's two of five in third down conversions, and this is their longest one of the day. Third and ten. Carlos Carson and Emil Harry go wide right. Watch Palmer here, Don. Yep, he's set to the second man up at the lower portion of your screen. Paul Palmer in the slot. Covered by Ray Horton, number 20. The bird takes a look at him. Throws to Palmer, running in the open field. He has a first down and more. Good call, Trump. That was the man all the way. And again, it was the crossing pattern as Palmer beats Horton on the cross. And it's good for a first down, a gain of 14 yards on third and 10. David Fulcher finally makes the tackle. And what they're doing is they're... Now watch what happens. Ray Horton, number 20, really gets picked off by number 86, Emil Harry. Horton has to go way deep of those two guys, and that allows Palmer to get across the field, make an easy completion for an easy first down. Fulcher with the tackle. The crossing patterns are, work, are working big. Palmer with some nice numbers early, as you see. Three catches for 63 yards. Berg on first down, gives to Okoye, and the big 255-pound fullback from Nigeria. And Azusa Pacific College, who didn't pick up a football, never saw one really until four years ago, bangs ahead for a first down. Bears continue to lead the Redskins at Washington. Jets and Patriots scoreless. Indianapolis and Green Bay, where the turkey is running amok. They're up, tied up 3-3. Pittsburgh now holding to a 13-7 lead over the Eagles. On a second and five play, Okoye takes on tacklers, and he's close to a first down. If he didn't get there, it'll be third and about a foot. Xander finally rode him down. Well, one of the ways you beat the Cincinnati Bengals is to keep their offense off the field. This time you see Ferry, 64, doing an excellent job on Tim Crumrice, 69. Crumrice still able to get off the block. 
an assist on the tackle. But the time of possession to this point in the game clearly in favor of Kansas City, which keeps that potent Cincinnati offense over on the sideline resting. Battle foot short of the first down as the measurement shows. And so the Chiefs now go to third down and less than one. Frank Gans. Boomer Siasen waits to get back on the field and go to work. The opening drive for the highly regarded Bengal offense was good for 74 yards and 10 plays in the touchdown. Coming from behind to take a 7-3 lead. Another Lowry field goal has tightened it up since. It's a 7-6 game. Cincinnati's in the lead. Our set. Tight ends are Jonathan Hayes and Alfredo Roberts. back is Palmer and he slips ahead but does get the first down for Kansas City to the Cincinnati 42 yard line from Rye made the play again on defense for Cincinnati on the Chiefs now four of seven in third down conversions coming into the ball game converting just 36 percent he trips over his offensive lineman but still is able to pick up enough yardage for the first down I've looked for a crossing pattern right here they've been open all day Bengal corners coming up tight on the wide receivers looking to bump and run with him Toy leads the blocking is Herman Hurd on a slant on a first down play gets to the 39 yard line Herman Hurd is a small elusive back 510 about 188 pounds Excellent speed from Southern Colorado. Tim Crumry and Jim Scow, two defensive linemen, combined to corner him and knock him down. Brings up second down and seven now for Kansas City. Seven and a half to go in the first half. There's that time of possession. That does not equate to the scoreboard, though. Well, but what you're doing is you're keeping this yes, right. offense on the sideline, and that gives them no chance to score. So Kansas City's winning several phases of this game already. The Bengals hold a one-point lead as the bird looks long. Stephon Page makes the catch at the 25-yard line. That was the play of this game. Super City the catch by Rodney Holman. The biggest play of this game just made by wide receiver Stephon Page. Good for 14 yards and a first down. Excellent job keeping his feet inbound. Look at his feet just go dead. Lewis Phillips, 24, the closest man in coverage to this point. Kansas City had been running the crossing patterns, and they go with the out. And Steve DeBerg again hanging onto the ball the last minute. Knows he's going to get hit. Tim Crumry puts him down, but it's a nice completion for Kansas City. And a first down. The Chiefs, the team that has lost three games by one point. Six games by less than a touchdown, and now they see something they don't like on first down. And so a timeout is signaled from the sideline and called on the field. We'll be back to Kansas City in a moment. You know, if I've discovered one thing from driving this new Mazda 929, it's this. Not only does it measure up to the great cars of the world with its luxury and quiet, it more than measures up when you introduce it to your favorite piece of road. The new Mazda 929, a high-performance luxury sedan, the Mazda way. Shack, Merry Christmas. New sure spread fast about the Radio Shack electronic games we gave Bobby for Christmas. They're great fun. You need a good offense to score on the pro action football games. Raceway has two skill levels to challenge your run for the checkered flag. And LCD Fireaways directional shooting lets you blast alien invaders. We knew the kids would love them. But we didn't realize they'd be this popular. Fun at your fingertips. Electronic games from $7.95 to $29.95. Only at Radio Shack. 
game is brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks, including the all-new Mazda MPV. By Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers, the best burgers in the business. And by Norelco Lift and Cut Shavers, we made close comfortable. This is Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy back at Arrowhead Stadium where the Kansas City Chiefs trail by one, but this drive by the Chiefs Trump might be their most from a number of play standpoint of the season. 16 to this point. This play is number 16 to this point. 68 yards in this drive, which is time of possession. Look at the difference in the plays. Just rushing plays there. Berg throws to an open man. That's Carlos Carson ducking into the defender and down to the 15-yard line. He has a first down for the Kansas City Chiefs. A first and 10 throw good for 11. Kansas City's offense with this combination of crossing patterns really got the Cincinnati Bengals defense confused. You can see that Fulcher 33, Eric Thomas 22 late getting there. The Burgers doing a good job of looking all over the field and finding that open receiver as they're going to measure to see if in fact this is for a first down. Chiefs have been down here two times before. They've come away with just two field goals. Short, very short. And that spot was not a friendly one for the Chiefs as it's back short of the 15. But second down arises now with inches to go for the first down. Six minutes and 42 seconds to play in the first half. Kansas City opened the scoring on the first drive of the game. They went downfield and Nick Lowry kicked a 37-yard field goal. Then the Bengals got the ball for the first time, went 74 yards in 10 plays. With Woods on a touchdown run from in close, seven to three. Lowry kicked another field goal. It's now seven to six, Cincinnati. But the Chiefs in position to take the lead with at least a field goal. They could get more than that the way they're moving the ball. McCoye, the up back, gets the first down to about the 12 yard line from Ryan Scour on the tackle for Cincinnati. That's the 17th play now of this drive. And it's now 33 offensive plays for Kansas City in this first half, just 15 for Cincinnati. I don't think I've ever seen a 17-play drive. You're about to see at least an 18-play drive. And Boomer Esiason well-rested. The offense sitting over there getting cold, and it puts pressure on the offense to score every time they get the ball. They've got the power set in. One wide receiver, double tight ends, and the big back of Koye aligned behind DeBerg. Sounds like an audible, Don. Koye so fast at his huge size, and he rips inside the 10-yard line and down to the 8. He got four. Joe Kelly hit him. Not a lot of fun to hit a Koye when he's got a load of It looks like a Koye came out second best, though. Koye missed a lot of this season with a broken thumb. And, of course, anytime he misses time, he's just learning how to play the game of football from behind the defense. Good field job by the linebackers of the Cincinnati Bengals. 91 Xander, 58 Kelly. Chicago Bears at the moment way up on the Redskins at Washington 17 to nothing in the second quarter Jets have taken a three nothing lead and have had Leahy field goal on the Patriots Steelers continue to lead San Diego's gone up on Atlanta as right now second down and six for the first down second and nine for the touchdown comes up Herd tries to turn the corner leaving by some tacklers Herman Hurd is down to the five yard line for the Kansas City Chiefs and that brings up third and about three for the first down, third and five for the touchdown. Excellent running by Hurd. There's a missed tackle in the offensive backfield. Skip McClendon, 72. It's Carl Zander, 91, who can't make the tackle. Hurd, an excellent running back for his size. He picks up about four yards. Don, remember, this drive started on that fourth down and short. They convert. 19 plays they go. They've converted three third downs to first downs and a fourth down for a first down to start the drive. Coaches Gans and Sepchik, this is the longest drive for the Kansas City Chiefs all season. They better hurry. They only got five seconds on the 30-second clock. They didn't get it off. That is really poor football. That's a losing team that does that. That's the first penalty. 
of the day. It's as big as a 15 game. yard penalty. Offense. Too late getting the play in or getting the play communicated to the rest of the players. And now they're in a they were in a great spot at third and five. And now it's third and ten and down in this spot really a tremendous advantage for the defense. They're not going to drop as deep as they have all on the football field. Gans is yelling for a timeout. Oh, he said you should have taken a timeout before the clock expired. So again, the Chiefs self-destruct down close to where they need to go. They better hurry again. Third down and ten. The bird looks, he throws. It's a penalty marker in the end zone. A penalty marker is down in the end zone. The Chiefs are pointing at a defensive back for Cincinnati, but we'll see what the official says. If so, it'll be a first and goal. Holding call. So the Chiefs make a major error, then the Bengals counter with one of their own in play as Jerry Seaman makes the signal for holding. Holding, number 22 defense, first down. That's on Eric Thomas. So they get half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. So the Chiefs have avoided that big mistake. Chiefs have been running the ball very well straight ahead and running it right as Okoye is back in now, the big fullback. He gets the ball and he takes down people and fights inside the five-yard line. Got about two. It'll be second and goal from the four-yard line. Kansas City has scored 11 touchdowns this season, just one rushing. That was two weeks ago against the Los Angeles Raiders. DeBerg is thrown for the other 10. My suggestion would be put it up play the percentages you don't score a lot of rushing touchdowns in the first 10 you're probably not going to in the next one throw it take three chances I'd run it right three times they're getting the yards right open formation though double tight ends are in and throw they will as the Berg looks at Smith back at him. Incomplete ball. It'll be third down and goal now for Kansas City at the four-yard line. Leon White coming hard. Might have tipped the ball. Number 51, a third-year linebacker from Brigham Young. Big play for the Bengals. They had a double blitz. Reggie Williams, 57, comes from the outside. Leon White is untouched right up the middle. Slams the ball right back in the face of Steve DeBerg. Bengals have run only one play this quarter. Second quarter, and it has but two minutes and 43 seconds to play in it. Now. Third down comes up for the Kansas City Chiefs. This has got to be close to the 20th play. 20 second play of this drive. 20 second play of this drive. Coach White hasn't seen this before. He was Kansas City. Berg looks, play fake, swings it out. Palmer runs, defense is driven, and Palmer's knocked down for a loss on the play. Well done by Lewis Phillips and by the strong safety, David Fulcher. That's unbelievable. 22 plays, 70 yards. I'll make it closer to 80 yards, and they're going to get three points again. They just cannot close. Great sales pitch, but they can't close. Oh, that's that's the first time I've seen a 22-play drive that results in a field goal. You won't see that very often. Lowry is two for two. If he hits this one, it'll give the Chiefs a nine to seven lead. A 23-yarder coming up. That is the two-minute warning. First, the two-minute warning is given. A 23-play, 87-yard drive, and the Chiefs again end up somewhere other than the end zone, Trump, as they now will drive for a field goal. And if Lowry makes it, it'll give the Chiefs the lead. It'll be the 19th time he's hit a field goal in his last 20 tries dating back to last season. Don, they should lead 21-7. There's no way around it. Uh, to dominate, the only play the Cincinnati Bengals have run in the second quarter was the one pass play by Boomer Esiason that resulted in the interception that started the drive for Kansas City. 
absolutely unbelievable. 23 plays for three points. We're going to have to take Boomer and warm him up again. It's been so long since he's been out there. Lowry, an automatic kicker. You thought, mentioned he was cut by the Bengals. He was also cut by seven other teams. He's automatic. Out of Dartmouth, he's been doing it a long time. His ninth year, and he hits it to give the Chiefs the lead. Coach White counseling some of his offensive linemen as his high power offense is ready to go back out for the first time in a long time. A 23 play drive by the Chiefs results in three points. Better than coming up empty, but not a lot for a team that doesn't score touchdowns. Here is a high spinning kick by Lowry. And for Jennings, takes it from the 12. He can run hard, and Jennings takes it at the 25 out to the 29. Here come the Bengals from. Uh, Don, the Bengals scoring drive was 10 plays. They got seven points on it. Since then, they've run five, and the only play in the second quarter, the interception. 15 plays. This is a team that's averaging close to 70 plays a game. The Bengals began their drive to the Super Bowl seven years ago with five wins in November. This is the month where the good teams really crank it up as the Bengals have to get the lead back now with this drive. They're down 9-7 to seven late in the second quarter. People come hitting hard on running back James Brooks. Leonard Griffin, a big defensive end from Grambling, was the first to hit him, number 98. There's a real danger here now for Cincinnati as you look at the 10-minute ticker. They can be impatient, throw this ball up in the last minute, 35 or 40 seconds of the first half and give Kansas City another opportunity. Kansas City is with the win. Cincinnati has got to be very, very careful with this football. Can't just be heaving it all over the place. Homer's ready to heave it as he takes the deep drop. Big left-hander lets her fly, and Tim McGee comes down with the ball to the 48-yard line. Big hit by the Bengals as McGee goes way up to bring it down, and now Cincinnati calls a timeout with 106 to play in the first half. So the Bengals want to get some counsel if that big play gets them down. Quickly back to action we come. As Boomer Esiason brings out the offense with the play call. You see just 66 ticks left in the first half. Our producer today for NBC Sports is Kenneth Roy Edmondson. Our director, Bob Levy. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. The coordinating producer of NFL football, Ted Nathanson. Oh, that was a 23-yard completion. Good protection by Cincinnati. Kansas City going with the prevent defense. Dropping deep. First in 10 as Zayasin takes another deep drop. Out throw, and the coverage was there. The hit was made on the tight end Rodney Holman at the 43-yard line of the Chiefs. Ron Cherry was there to make the play. You'll remember he had the interception earlier to stop it. Bengal drive. He comes from the safety spot, reads the play perfectly, is over there. Just as Holman reaches for the ball, that ball is not thrown very well. And goes right back to the line of scrimmage. 9-7. Underdog Kansas City leads. 60 seconds left in the half. Here's a throw and a catch to Eddie Brown. His first of the day is good for a Cincinnati first down to the 39. It's actually the 29-yard line they spot the ball. 17-yard gain on the play. Bengals quickly into alignment without a huddle, and now a timeout is signal four. Looks like an official timeout. Bengals have both their timeouts left. Now you're going to start the clock again. You see what the best offense in the NFL does when there's almost no time left. Moves the ball almost as well. Madison throws it away wisely and stops the clock. It'll be second down and 10. 36 seconds to play in the half. Leonard Griffin was right on him. They were going with the quick out to try to break loose a receiver. McGee on the far side, Eddie Brown on the near side. He go and looks from one side all the way to the other. Leonard Griffin grabs a hold of his shoulder. Some of the fans were yelling for a sack, but it did not look like he threw that ball to avoid the sack. Griffin came from behind. At halftime, we go to NFL Live where Bob and Ahmad, Gail and Frank are standing by to update Sunday number 11. Zayasin play faking, look for the nice block. Zayasin with a deep throw, but it's way over the head of Tim McGee at the five-yard line. And brings up third down and ten now for the Bengals at the Kansas City 30. Nine to seven is the score. Underdog Chiefs in the lead on three Lowry field goals. Eddie Brown at the top. 
He runs the out against Albert Lewis, 29. He appears to be open, but as Siason had already chosen the side of the field he was going to, trying to get the ball to Tim McGee. Excellent coverage. One seconds left for Esiason in the Bengal offense. Two wide receivers set to the right. Brooks turns the corner and Brooks is outside. Gets to the 25-yard line and a penalty marker comes in after the play as people were throwing forearms after those blocks. Andy Hawkins, an outside linebacker, was the man who ran him out. I, I think Bengals run that sweep because this is a two-down area for him. I don't think they're going to be satisfied with a field goal. And look, the Bengals are signaling that the penalty is against Kansas City. Had there been no flag, it would have been fourth down and six for Cincinnati. But now the indication is that the call is against the Chiefs. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 50 defense. Another mistake First by the Kansas City Chiefs. A personal foul for unnecessary roughness. Who is the number? Jack Del Rio, the linebacker. Very expensive. Now Boomer has four downs to work with. Just 25 seconds on the clock. And three pass plays in, though. And two timeouts. Those timeouts are very, very important. It means that you can also run the ball for a touchdown. And throw over the middle on shorter down. They need the sideline to stop it. Zyerson looking out. Fires to Eddie Brown, who makes the turn and gets out of bounds. Eddie Brown out of bounds at the five-yard line with 18 seconds to play. Well, this is extraordinary. I mean, the Kansas City Chiefs defense plays wonderful football for all but the last two minutes of the first half. And then suddenly that prevent attitude has not worked because the Bengals have gone right down the field. Jack Del Rio, a veteran linebacker from Southern California, number 50, was acquired in a trade with New Orleans, a big, tough backer, 6'4", 240 pounds. His mistake was a big one, giving the Bengals four downs with time almost out. Personal foul call. Boom. Stanley Wilson, and he darts into the end zone. And so the Bengals make it happen. The best offense in the NFL finds a way, aided and abetted by a poor decision by Del Rio. And finally, it's Stanley Wilson on the payoff end from five yards away. Don, I don't believe Stanley Wilson was touched. He's the lone back behind Boomer Esiason. Let's see if anybody lays a hand on him. Reimer, 75, a good block. He's untouched. He runs five yards without a Kansas City Chief laying a hand on him. Never laid a glove on him. Now the extra point which will extend the Cincinnati lead to five, a very important one. Chiefs now forced to score a touchdown. Something they have been futile in attempting to do. They get close, but they don't get in. Now they'll get a kickoff with 14 seconds left in the half. Kazerski, the center, 64, does a great job on Baldinger, 91, and there's no one there. You draw them up on the on the chalkboard and hope they work that way, and they never. You don't. You can never picture that they'd work that way. He'd go five yards untouched. third touchdown of the season the second of the day for the Cincinnati Bengals Mickey Wood scored the first one from in close and they now come back to take the lead the lead has changed hands twice Chiefs led 3-0 Bengals led 7-3 Chiefs rallied and led 9-7 and now the Bengals come back with just seconds remaining in the first half to take the lead on a Stanley Wilson touchdown run was 71 yards they went in a minute and 38 seconds and they went into the end zone unlike the Chiefs who went 87 yards on 23 plays only to have to settle for a field goal well, good pass protection in that particular drive Kansas City dropping their defense in the prevent and because of the time that Boomer Esiason had he got, gets the completions then the big, the big call on Jack Del Rio and then a great job by the left side of the offensive line. Reimers, Munoz, and the center, Kazerski. And Wilson untouched for the final five yards. Look at that. <laughs> no justice in this game. 
Penalty is a rewarded though, I yeah. think. 23 plays on the Chiefs drive. James Saxon is back deep now for Kansas City. Johnson hits a squibber into the end zone. They'll not bring out. Palmer downs it with just 14 seconds to play. And the Kansas City offense comes out again, and it'll be with the wind at his back. Some long ball throwing by DeBerg to close the first half. Chicago over under over an underdog going into Washington now has a 20 to nothing halftime lead. The Jets continue to lead the Patriots. Steelers lost their lead. Now they've come back on yet another Anderson field goal to take a 16-14 lead on the Eagles at halftime. San Diego, which has the worst offense in the NFL, holding to a 3-0 lead. NFL Live coming up in moments. Fans are booing, but the Chiefs have had a very good first half. They just missed three opportunities. Time of possession was wonderful. For the Chiefs, that is. Well, it's the same story as always. They're always in the game and usually behind by the slightest of margins, which is all it takes to lose. We'll see what they can do in the second half as the Bengals, with their most impressive offensive display of the day, march into the end zone with just a minute and 38 seconds of time elapsed and take a 14-9 lead. This is Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy at Kansas City. NFL Live is coming up next on NBC Sports. Bob Trumpy in 20 seconds or less describe this first half. Uh, remarkable. The Kansas City Chiefs have it twice as much time as Cincinnati, but three missed touchdown opportunities allow Cincinnati to lead by five at the end of the first half. 14 to nine is the count. Bengals in the lead. And now let's go to NFL Live in New York. Hi again, everybody. Bob Costas back along with Ahmad Rashad at our NFL Live studios in New York. Here's what's happening around the league. The Bears with Vince Tobin still in charge, but with Mike Ditka watching from the sidelines, not coaching. They have the game well in hand at RFK. They have limited the Redskins to four yards rushing in the first half, 49 yards total offense, a 20-0 Chicago lead as they look to take their record to 9-2. Cincinnati just got a five-yard run from Stanley Wilson a bit before the end of the half. That's the game some of you are watching, and they lead. 14-9 at Kansas City. Here's the first touchdown of the day for the Bengals. It's the ninth rushing TD of the season for the rookie out of UNLV, Icky Woods. It makes his fans plenty happy. Puts them in a singing mood. Mood or mood? Cue it up, boys. Something like that. Here it comes. Well, he can block you on the left. He can sweep it to the right. And he pulls it to the end zone without all his mind. Oh, Icky. Wow. Yeah, they're, they're in a singing mood, uh, and that brings us to the Jets and the Patriots. Most of the first half played in a driving rain at the Meadowlands, and the Jets on a 47-yard field goal by Pat Leahy, leading three to nothing. Ahmad, my man. <laughs> you know, it sort of puts me in a driving uh, mood. Singing mood. Yeah. But you know what? The only thing driving in the first half was the rain out there. This is one of the more boring games that... I think I've ever watched uh, three points. They've had 11 punts. I feel sorry for the people that have to sit out there through the rain. Oh, I guess the rain stopped now, but the play's the same. The rain did stop, and the Jets have the 3 nothing lead. Meanwhile, at Lambeau Field, the Colts in front of the Packers, Eric Dickerson with 48 yards rushing in the first half. The Colts lead it 13-3. to Now, some of you are watching that game right now on NBC, but for those of you who haven't had the opportunity, here's the first half highlight. A turkey brought to Lambeau Field by a Packer fan anxious to show his displeasure with his team. And there is the gobbler making a move to the sideline. Took them several minutes to get him off the field. Eventually, they box him in and run him out of bounds, stopping the clock. 
and it stopped the game for several minutes. The Colts now lead it at halftime 13-3. to The Steelers have been opening up their offense the past few weeks. Say what you want about Chuck Noll. He's been taking some chances in response to criticism. Lewis slips off the end around, throws a 13-yard pass to Merrill Hogue for a Pittsburgh touchdown. They have three field goals from Gary Anderson. The first one was good for 52 yards. They lead late in the first half at home against the Eagles, 16 to 14. And San Diego at Atlanta, the Chargers with a 3-0 lead and a 23-yarder by Vince Abbott. They have a new starting quarterback. He is Mark Vlasic starting his first NFL game. And here's Vlasic in a pickle, sacked by cornerback Scott Case of the Falcons in a first half dominated by defense and led by the Chargers. 3 to nothing. Tampa Bay playing at Detroit. This one has now gone to halftime, tied at 10. Four Tampa Bay turnovers, including two more Vinny Testaverde interceptions. He's been picked off 26 times this year, easily the highest total in the league. And we'll be back after these messages from your local stations. NFL Live halftime activities will continue in a moment. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Time, the AFC Central Division leaders, the Cincinnati Bengals, holding to a 14-9 lead over Kansas City. The Bengals again doing what they had to do with a 1 minute and 38 second drive to close the first half. They come back to take the lead. It's amazing, Trump, that the Bengals have about half as many offensive plays as Kansas City in the game, but scoring is what counts. Uh, as I remember, Cincinnati scored on its first drive of the game, and they scored on their last drive of the first half. And the number of plays is remarkable, 42 to 24. Now, Kansas City had the ball at the 19, at the 17, and at the 4, and ended up with nine points, three field goals. Time of possession, outrageous, absolutely outrageous. The Kansas City Chiefs, their biggest problem this season, converting third downs. They've done a good job with that. But also getting the ball in the end zone, they can't do it. We're going to see a heck of a second half, though. These Chiefs aren't down, even though they're down on the scoreboard. That kickoff sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. As the Chiefs come out really ripping on special teams, Stanford Jennings swept under inside his 20-yard line. And so Esiason and the Cincinnati offense will start from the 17. Esiason's numbers in the first half, not bad. 7 of 13, 105 yards. Also an interception, but they just didn't run enough plays. 24 plays in the first half of a football game. To the run on first down, that is Icky Woods, and keeps read that all the way, making the hit was Leonard Griffin, the left defensive end, number 98. Also on the play was Andy Hawkins, a veteran outside linebacker, 59. And the Bengals now face basically the same problem they did in New England several weeks ago in that they've allowed a team that was really struggling to feel that starting the second half they can compete. They did that with New England. They've done that now for Kansas City. They've made a game they should blow out. A very difficult game now for them to win. And they've done probably a good job, Kansas City, in defensing Eddie Brown. Here is a give up the middle, and look at Icky Woods break into open field. Woods crosses the 40 and is finally run out of bounds by J.C. Pearson all the way out of the 47-yard line. So Woods, that quick big back from Nevada, Las Vegas, at 230 pounds, busted and then bounces to the outside. Now that takes away any steam for the Kansas City defense. Again, a great job up front by the offensive line, 28 yards on the carry by Icky Woods, and they got everybody up and off the line of scrimmage and J.C. Pearson has to make the tackle 28 yards later. That's one thing the Bengals did not do a lot of in the first half, and that's run the ball. Icky's got his fan club. I don't know if Icky printed that up at the hotel last night. Now they're out of Bengal group here. And again, they go right to the run. Running hard straight ahead is James Brooks behind that sensational offensive line. Kazurski at center. Reimers and Montoya, the guards. Munoz and Joe Walter, the tackles. Don, it looks like, this is a little premature, but it looks like the choice of the Cincinnati Bengals coaches is, yeah, we've allowed Kansas City to feel they can play with us, but we're going to show them in this first drive of the second half, you can't handle us. So they're going almost exclu exclusively with the run to try to take some of the steam away from the Kansas City defense. Second down comes up, second down and six for the Bengals who lead early in the third quarter, 14-9. Esiason with blockers in front. 
gets good yardage and ducks out of bounds. That's what they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing. They realize the position they put themselves in to allow a 1 8 and 1 team to play with them this long. All right, let's go with what we do best. Let's put our offensive line against their defensive line and see if we can slow Kansas City down and take away some of the emotion. This looks to me like a designed play all the way. Max Montoya, 65 personal escort, ends up being an 11-yard gain and another first down. Riggs in motion. With the run they go, Stanley Wilson, who has a touchdown, takes it outside. And on a first down play, Stanley Wilson, a fleet runner from Oklahoma, is down to about the 36-yard line. A very short gain on the play, tackled by Cofield and by J.C. Pearson. The Bears extend their lead to still more over favored Washington. 20 to nothing now in the third quarter. In that driving rainstorm in the Meadowlands of New Jersey, the Jets holding to a 3-0 lead over New England. Indianapolis up on Green Bay. The Colts a very tough team. The New York Times computerizes every statistic, every factor of every team in the NFL. And in the latest summation, four of the top, top five teams in the National Football League of the American Conference, including the Bengals. James Brooks runs the ball, and he gets it down to the 33. In fact, six of the top eight teams are from the American Conference. The only NFC teams in were the Bears, who rated third, and the Rams, who rated sixth. I still like the NFC. Let's watch the offensive line. 64, the center, Kazerski. Montoya does a great job on Leonard Griffin getting him on the ground. And James Brooks, who tends to get lost behind that offensive line, picks up about four. Third and five comes up for Esiason. Hard throw and a good defensive play at the 25-yard line. That's an outstanding defensive play. J.C. Pearson, starting for the injured Kevin Ross, was right there as the ball came to Eddie Brown, who still has just one catch today. He was right there last week, of course, Eddie Brown with 216 yards of receptions. Boomer seems to lock on to Eddie Brown here. Good protection. J.C. Pearson is right there to knock the ball away. Fourth down, Jim Breach in for a field goal. 41 yards against the wind. This is a reach. This is a real reach for Jim Breach. Breach is 7 of 9 this season. He's only tried one over 40 yards, and he's 0 for 1. I'd watch out here. Kirk Schoenert is the holder. I'd be very careful if I'm Kansas City. Punt. Punt. There you go. And a beautifully executed punt out of bounds at the 5-yard line. So you have to tip your hat to the best team. The Cincinnati Bengals with an 8-2 and two record, and there's one of the reasons they have it. At crunch time, they make big plays. And that was a huge play. As Breach's chance of hitting that long a field goal were negligible, now they punt it out of bounds at the 5. Ball punted or snapped right to Jim Breach, and he puts it out inside the 5. KC first and 90. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Coors Light, there's no slowing down with a silver bullet. It's the right beer now. And by Braun Electric Shavers. It is through superior design that superior performance can be achieved. 12-22 to play third quarter. The Bengals lead as they did at the half, 14-9. Their opening drive in the third quarter. Stalls and then setting up for a field goal, Jim Breach instead punts the ball and does it beautifully down to the five-yard line and out of bounds. Now the Chiefs with the long field to go try to get some running room as they send a Koye right up the Bengal defense. He's out to the nine-yard line. Knocked down by Crum Ryan Kelly. Across the defensive front of Cincinnati, Skip McClendon, Tim Crum Ryan, Jim Scow. Leon White, Carl Zander, Joe Kelly, and Reggie Williams back the line. With Phillips and Thomas at the corners, Fulcher and Wilcox the safeties. Don, this is when Kansas City has come with these crossing patterns, which has really done a job on the Bengal defense. This is the first game this year that this Bengal defense has not been able to stop an opponent. The Burgett quarterback. Herman Hurd's in his backfield. He comes out now as a receiver, and Okoye is the lone setback. Second down and seven. Crossing pattern. 
Long ball. Man is open. The ball is tipped away. What a defensive play by Lewis Phillips, a third-year cornerback from Northern Alabama. One of the fastest Bengals stride for stride with Carlos Carson. Donnie had a choice. He had Herman Hurd coming on the crossing pattern about, pattern about 10 yards deep, wide open. But DeBerg, feeling the time, chose to go. There you see Hurd going across the picture. He is wide open. Could have been an easy completion for a first down. He goes for the distance, play. and Phillips knocks it away. So that's six times today that DeBerg, with the wind of his back, has tried to go deep. And six times he's almost connected, but not yet. Now he has a third down seven play coming up. They keep backs in the block for him. Bengals are a team that blitzes virtually all the time. Here's an out pattern. Beavers down. Is there a marker? There is not. And Neil Harry was on the ground, but it's ruled that Eric Thomas was clean and covering it. Well, Neil Harry slipped. He tried to make the break out. He's the man who came inside in motion. But when he went to break, to break back outside, he slipped. And now here's a rarity. Kelly Goodburn back to punt. First time for either team. That's the way this ball game is going. Goodburn, not where a punter likes to be, in his own end zone. There's the deep man, Ira Hillary, for the Bengals. He's standing inside his 45-yard line. Goodburn from Emporia State in Kansas does have the wind at his back, and he uses it well. A long kick downfield. Hillary backpedaling to his 38. And there is a channel up the left side. Hillary is finally knocked down by Jack Del Rio at about midfield. Bengals get their second possession of the third quarter in very good start position. A 53-yard punt and 11-yard return by Hillary. And the Bengals are set to go first and 10 from midfield. It is 14-9. The Bengals continue to lead. Kelly Goodburn's been hitting the ball long distance. The last was his fourth consecutive punt of 50 yards or more. deep drop man's open McGee takes the ball coming back to correct on the missed throw and he's down to the 25 yard line ball to his wrong side and Tim McGee the fastest Bengal out of Tennessee makes the correction and makes the catch J.C. Pearson the man in coverage that ball's under thrown ends up being a 27 yard completion Munoz 78 75 Reimers pass protection for the five offensive linemen right there plenty of time for Boomer Esiason and McGee does make a great adjustment. That's his fourth catch of the day. Kansas City has done a great job shutting down Eddie Brown. First down for the Bengals on the run is James Brooks. Turning the corner, he is down close to the 20. The hard as James Brooks, as tough as a boot. 185 pounds, the big guys all hit down him. And now Brooks starts up with one of his tacklers. They had a hard time keeping this guy on the sideline when he had a broken hand. Yeah, he's one of his big problems is when he's hurt, he won't stop. He keeps playing. And you can see Kansas City trying to strip the ball away. Deron Cherry and JB makes the catch on the field. And the Cincinnati Bengals retain possession. New England comes back to take the lead on the Jets in the third quarter. 14-9 is the count here at Kansas City's Arrowhead Stadium. Bengals with the ball on the five-point lead. Third quarter. Zayasin, fastball to Eddie Brown. Quickly knocked down on the play. Evan Porter, one of the safeties, made the tackle. It came on a second down and seven play, and the game was good for about six yards. Brown's only caught two passes today. Look what these cornerbacks in this de defensive backfield has done against other great receivers. Willie really Gall of the Raiders, the teal of Denver, Largent of C Seattle, and Drew Hill of Houston. It's not unusual that this defensive backfield shuts down great receivers, and they shut down Eddie Brown today. It's third and just over two, and they place the ball for the Bengals. With a run up the middle, if he would, fighting for yards, he has the first down and more. As Woods of the Bengals takes it down to the 10 yard line. Again, great job by that offensive line. Really handling the interior of the Chiefs defense. The nose tackle, Baldinger, and the two inside backers, Dino Hackett and Jack Del Rio, they basically get blown off the line of scrimmage. Dino Hackett overruns the play, 56. 
Looked like Mike Stenzerud, 67, didn't even realize that Icky Woods was the running back that went by him. Icky Woods had 110 yards last Sunday against the Steelers. First 100-yard run against Pittsburgh this season. First down for the Bengals, who lead 14-9. Zayasin play faking beautifully, wide open. He throws to the end zone, and the ball is out, though, where it's caught by Tim McGee. James Brooks was uncovered in the end zone. Absolutely open. He chose Tim McGee, James Brooks. Somebody missed the coverage on Brooks. 21 was standing in the far side of the end zone. Boomer faked the ball to him. Nobody covered him at all. You see a good play action fake by Boomer. Dino Hackett drawn up to the line of scrimmage. He's locked onto McGee. Can't get his feet down. Good call by the officials. Chiefs again have allowed only six touchdown passes all season. In 10 previous games, they've allowed none today. To the high scoring Bengals. There are touchdowns on short run by Dickie Woods and by Stanley Wilson. Wood booms into the secondary where a wave of tacklers finally gets him at the five yard line on a second down play. Gain is down to the five yard line. Dino Hackett makes the tackle again. You see the offensive line kind of pull out. Munoz gets Neil Smith standing straight up. Munoz then gets a hit on 56 Hackett. Third down and goal. This is a tough call for any team. I wonder if you go for it on both downs. Third down and goal it is. I think they very well could try that. Time. Looking to put the knockout punch on if they can. Siasen taking a look. Open. Lots of time. Good coverage. Now he runs it. And Boomer Siasen. Play faking is going to get down close. And he is down to the one-yard line but not in. Now the signal comes late. It is a touchdown for Esiason. Unbelievable. You think we're going to be looking at this on the official replay. This is also going to make a highlight film even if he's not in. Chiefs had great coverage all over the field. Former went to every eligible receiver. Great coverage but not great pass rush. Uh, he's got plenty of time. You see he's looking all over the field trying to find a receiver. Esiason, one of that group of quarterbacks who are creators. J.C. Pearson misses the tackle. Esiason's knee is down. His knee is down. I do not believe they will count that as a touchdown. You can clearly see his knee hit on the field of play before he got the ball in the end zone. And even as you speak, the officials are concurring up here. They're going to look at it again. Trumpy, you're just too much, man. Sometimes. <laughs> Great athletic ability. Neil Smith misses a tackle. J.C. Pearson misses a tackle. See if we can see his knee. Tough there. Can't really tell from that angle, but from here, watch his left leg. Yep. Knee down. Definitely down. Then the ball goes and stretches to the end zone. I think they're going to come back out on the field and either try a field goal or go for the touchdown. in the booth. Things are being reviewed. Dave Kamansky is the replay official. Boomer's wondering if he has a TD or I have to go back on out there. They must be ready to take the field goal. Give him an eight-point lead and Chiefs would need two scores. Well, they've got the extra point team in there because the official signaled touchdown. Here comes the call. After further review of instant replay, the play stands. Touchdown. How? I don't know. Tell me how. <laughs> the official ruling is that it was inconclusive, the replay review. So when there's not enough evidence to turn it the other way, they go with the call. Well, in Cincinnati, they'll buy that. Kansas City, that'll be shown 150 times in the next two days. His knee was clearly down. Reach out to try the point after, which he delivers. And the uh, Cincinnati Bengals extend their lead now to 21 to 9 with 7.14 to play in the third quarter. Boomer Esiason just scored the last touchdown after review by the officials. Trump, they said there wasn't conclusive evidence to change the call. Two broken tackles. My contention is his left knee is down right there. And he stretches into the end zone. And guess what the official is saying is that Esiason was not in control of a tackler. 
Juwan Cherry hit him and knocked him over to the left a little bit. And there's no question his knee hit before he went in the end zone, but the touchdown stands. Kansas it's City is not going to like that call. You are an ex bangle uh, Well, it makes no difference. I mean, what's fair is fair. That's right. Whatever's that's, fair. And that's stretching it about as far as you possibly can right there. Look at Boomer. He's describing that one. When he's 60, he'll describe that one. <laughs> this guy was coming at me. That guy was coming at me. I gave him a forearm shiver. Straight arm this guy. Hustled into the end zone. It's a tough count now, Trump, for the Kansas City Chiefs. This is a team that can't score touchdowns, has only three field goals today. And they're down by 12. They need two touchdowns. Lee Johnson is ready to kick off now for the Bengals. Back deep is Paul Palmer and Kenny Gamble. High spinning kickoff. Palmer takes it at the three. Barney Bussey was down to cover on the play. And now while we have a moment, let's go to NFL Live. And here's Gail. All right, Don, at the Meadowlands, the Patriots looking for the first road win of the season. After an interception, Doug Flutie back, finds veteran wide receiver Stanley Morgan, 19 yards out. Patriots take the lead over the Jets, 7-3. Back to Kansas City, Don and Bob. Where we have 7.05 to play. First and ten for the Chiefs who have to start throwing now. They need big offensive plays to get back in this. They start off with the run, and Akoya gets a big play, busting it wide open. Look at the speed of this huge man, 255 pounds. And Akoya is all the way down inside the 35-yard line. So they get long ball offense on the ground from the biggest player in their backfield. Christian Akoya, a 45-yard run from scrimmage. That's the longest run from scrimmage by the Kansas City Chiefs this year. And it looks like David Grant missed the tackle. And then here's Eric Thomas trying to run down a Koya. That big fella can move for 255 to 60 pounds. Well, they claim Trump he's been timed in under 4-4 four four, or under 4-5. He's run the ball now nine times for 86 yards. Well, this is definitely a drive that the Chiefs have to get the ball in the end zone for. No question about it. And up this time, Herman Hurd cutting back. Big hit on stick by Joe Kelly. The inside linebacker from Washington, who was the number one pick of the Bengals back in 86. Getting better every week. Joe Kelly held his position, squared up on the runner, and delivered a hard strike. Short gain on the play. It brings up second down and eight. Plus side of the field now, Kansas City has really struggled today. The crossing patterns were there in the first half. You got Hurd and Saxon in the ball game. Saxon, an excellent receiver out of the backfield. Right in, Alfredo Roberts, a rookie from Miami of Florida who played on a national championship team at Miami. And this 250 pounder who's primarily a blocker makes his 10th reception of the year. Redskins are on the board now. But still trailing Chicago by 13. Indianapolis extends its lead over the Packers. Colts one of the toughest teams in the league right now. Pittsburgh just got a touchdown throw from Bubby Brister. Lewis lifts 89 yards and they're up now on the Eagles 23-17. Chiefs with their most impressive offensive display so far. And some big plays now. Here's a pitch back. Herman Hurd cuts up field, cuts inside, and he gets down to the 17-yard line. A gain of only about a yard on a play. It was a first down and 10 play from the 18-yard line. Well, remember, first half, Carl Sander makes the tackle on that play. The Chiefs have already been to the 19, the 17, and the 4 and came away with three field goals. It is, of course, a doubleheader day on NBC Sports. The big matchup in the second game, the Browns play the Broncos at Denver. A rematch of the last two AFC championship games. Cleveland's tough Art Modell, the owner of the Browns, said, we might have to win our last six to get in as a wild card, the way this division is shaping up. Browns start the day at six and four. Game behind Houston, two games behind the Bengals. Long ball, end zone, man open, Stephon Page. It is a touchdown for Kansas City. Great catch. Stephon Page makes a 17-yard reception, his third excellent catch of the day. 
You remember those two early in the game. One for 22 yards, one for 18. And finally, the Chiefs are able to hit a touchdown throw. And they're right back in the game, down 21-15 with the extra point coming up. His fourth touchdown reception of the year. He runs a little slant pattern inside. Good pass protection. DeBerg has a chance to look around. Bengals are coming with a blitz. They get man coverage, and Eric Thomas gets burned. That's the 11th touchdown pass that Steve DeBerg has thrown this year. That's all that Kansas City has. Extra point is up and good. And the Chiefs are back to it in five with five minutes and 19 seconds to play in the third quarter. It's 21-16 Cincinnati. The Chiefs kick off in a moment. A rare big moment on offense for the Chiefs this season as a perfect throw and a great catch by Stephon Page. He's in the end zone from 17 yards out, and the Chiefs are back in the game. Bengals still in the lead, 21-16. Now the bad news for Kansas City. The Cincinnati offense is out next. Kick off downfield by Lowry, and Stanford Jennings runs back another one. Off the 20, he breaks into open field. He's going to go. Stanford Jennings breaks the clock. Lowry's in pursuit. He'll make a dive, but he won't get him. As Stanford Jennings takes it the distance, and the Cincinnati Bengals come on without even getting their offense on the field. A 98-yard touchdown return. On to that point, the longest kickoff return Cincinnati had had in the season. 30 yards. This is strange, too, in that no one touches Stanford Jennings. Once he breaks through this initial line, there may have been a little touch there. He is already to Nick Lowry, the kicker, and then it's a matter of just striding it out 98 yards. One play, one score. And we'll see if Kansas City can come back from that. What would seem to be a knockout punch. The extra point is delivered up and through by Breach, and the high-scoring Bengals are now very close to their season average. With 5.01 to go in the third quarter, they lead the game 28-16. to If that field had been 10 yards farther, they'd have caught Stanford Jennings. We used to call that the monkey May Day. After about 60 yards of running, it feels like a 100-pound eight jumps on your shoulders, <laughs> and he's just driving you in the ground. This is a great job up front, but I mean... He's going all the way after 10 yards of running. See, J.C. Pearson, the safety man, 24, commits himself too close. And now watch those feet start to get heavy. Like wearing construction boots. 98 yards. It's been years since the Bengals had a kickoff return for a touchdown. Stanford did what it took, but he will not be going for the goal at Barcelona in the sprints. No, and he doesn't want to go back out there and run a deep pattern right now either. Kicker almost got him. Now Coach Gans has seen yet another disappointment in a season of heartbreak here in Kansas City. Murphy's Law could be inscribed on the building. And Frank Gans was the special teams coach of the Kansas City Chiefs before he became the head coach. The Chiefs had, without question, the best special teams in the league. In 1986, basically, as a group, ushered this Kansas City Chief team into the playoffs. Stanford Jennings celebrated. With these law, of course, if anything can go wrong, it will at the worst possible time. It just did. High spinning kick, and here comes Palmer from the 11. I hope he did his knee didn't go on him. He didn't appear to slip. He's all right. He's up and healthy. Oh, he's limping a little bit, Don. You may have been right. Turned an ankle or slipped or strained a muscle or something, but looked like he tripped on the 15-yard line. No, that's not that's painted. That's a joke, any, son. That's not painted any heavier than the 16. I don't understand it. You know, he's limping. He may have pulled a muscle there, Don.
Paul Palmer carries the ball on first down to the displeasure of the Chiefs fans. They want 60 yard bombs put in the air. On looking at the Bengals press guide, the last kickoff return for a touchdown by the Bengals, Willie Shelby, 1976. October 3rd versus Cleveland, 97 yards. So, Willie, if you're out there, babe, we haven't forgotten you. You were the greatest that day. But your record has been broken. Yeah. Second down and eight comes up as the bird takes a deep drop. Blitz, here's a throw and a catch. Nicely done by the Chiefs. Yes. Now the ruling that Taylor was out of bounds when he caught it out. He's not going to give him a catch. He got it. First down. Chiefs were complaining that the hit by Lewis Billups, 24, was at the sideline. Official attendance, 34,000 here today. Whoa. Two seats for every person. Plenty of room. All you want on the aisle. They had some big crowds here, though, this year. Well. Huge great sellouts. Unfortunately, in this stadium, you do have a lot of what they call first-class first class seats. Tremendous facility. This whole complex. Royal Baseball Stadium. Here's the Koye. You remember the last time he had it. That same play went for 45 yards. At this time, Carl Zander makes the knockdown for Cincinnati. Game clock down to 345 and running in the third quarter. Bengals 28, Chiefs 16. It was 14-9 Cincinnati at the half. Big play of this game. The last time the Bengals had the ball, it was in the hands of Stanford Jennings and a kickoff return from the two. It ended 98 yards later in the Chiefs end zone for a touchdown. Second down coming up, second and seven for DeBerg. Blitz again, picked up well, long ball, man's open, Carlos Carson slides to a halt at the 36-yard line. Big hit, first down, Kansas City. I got to tell you, Kansas City's not slowing down, they're not giving up. Lewis Phillips on the coverage, a 32-yard catch. This is basically finding the seam in the zone. Carson doesn't run a pattern, he just goes straight up the field. DeBerg does a great job of looking off the free safety. And there's Carson right in the middle. He's wide open. Nice catch. And Billups is injured and goes off to the sideline. Kansas City's been able to throw the ball almost at will against Cincinnati. Ricky Dixon will now come in and replace Lewis Billups, rookie out of Oklahoma. I wouldn't be a bit surprised with DeBerg. You go right to the Ricky Dixon side. He has some nice numbers, Trump. 15 to 24 for Steve DeBerg for 218 yards and a touchdown. He has not been intercepted. He scores 12 points a game at 16 already. Okoye on first down, tries the middle of the Bengal defense. Crumrai always seems to be there. Lander with a lot of tackles today. Also on the staff with 73, Eddie Edwards in at left end. Only three. And Christian Okoye, if he's not over 100 yards, is very, very close. 11 for 91. He's going to have to carry. Here's the handoff to Okoye. He pops down and a second down and six play inside the 30-yard line. He's to the 28. Angling into Xander. Okoye, extraordinary athlete. 6'1", 253 pounds. He's been clocked in under 4'5 for the 40. Went to where? Azusa? Azusa Pacific? Azusa Pacific. From Nigeria. Led all rookie runners last year in the NFL with 660. They're down coming up now as DeBerg sets in the shotgun. Watch Palmer here in the crossing pattern, Don. It's been open all day. There it is again. Oh, knocked down. Well done by the Bengals. Coming hard was Jim Scow, a defensive end, the former Cornhusker from Nebraska. Paul Palmer was wide open, Don. Absolutely wide open. Scow just happened to get his hand up in the right spot at the right time. Watch Palmer. He'll come from the down, right on the right-hand side of the screen. He's not, you can just see him just out of the edge of the picture. He is wide open for a first-down pickup, and Scow knocks that ball away. 
Wow. Lowry getting set now for yet another field goal attempt. He's three for three today. This will be his longest. 47 yarder. In his career, he's hit 15 of over 50 yards. Plenty of distance. And he's right yeah. there. So Nick Lowry goes four for four on the day with a 47 yard field goal, and it's now a 28 to 19 game. Kansas City shows no signs of giving up. Even at 1 8 and 1, they're showing a great deal of character here. The switch from Bill Kenny to Steve DeBerg for Kansas City has worked. They just didn't plan on a 98 yard kickoff return against them. Raiders' game plan used to be when they came here to keep old Paint in the corral. That horse is running. The Chiefs have just scored. Paint's been running many laps today with four field goals and just one touchdown. He really goes into a little bit of a canter, a trot there on the field goals. He kind of lets it rip when there's a TD. Does uh, Warpaint have uh, turf hooves on, turf uh, shoes? I, I'm sure with Toma walking around here, the genius of fields, nobody does it into that field. There's Warpaint. He has got a lot of work this year. All right. All right. I was just going to say that. He's, he's fresh. Please, that horse. He wants to be out there more often. Next Sunday, join NBC Sports for another exciting football doubleheader beginning at 12.30 Eastern time with NFL Live. Then the Jets go against the NFL's best record team, the Bills, at Buffalo. The explosive Bengals take on the Cowboys at Dallas, plus regional action. Highlights of early games, and in the second half of the doubleheader, the Denver Broncos go to New Orleans as one of the doubleheader games. And now a long kick downfield. Stanford Jennings, does he have anything left? Running on empty maybe after that 98-yard return for a touchdown. He gets to the 26. Not bad, though. That was a 24-yard return. There's Warpaint, the cowboy and the cowgirl. Maybe that's an Appaloosa. Or a Pinto. It's a well-rested horse. Let's agree to that. and 10 for the Bengals who hold to a nine point lead late in the third quarter. 106 to play in it. Brooks down the run. James Brooks breaks into open field. And they finally whistle him down at the 34 yard line. Nicely done by James Brooks. Taking on tacklers. He's ahead for a gain of about eight yards. Coming into the game Don we documented that Kansas City's had great trouble stopping the run allowing 154 yards rushing per game. Brooks and Icky Woods have done a great job of running the ball today to try to change the attitude of the Kansas City team. They changed Icky's number, Trump. Early in the season, he was 31. He was fumbling, and his college number was 30. And he was superstitious, and they changed it to 30, and he hasn't fumbled since. Whatever he wants, he gets it done. Straight ahead, Woods goes on second and about two. He'll be very close to a first down. We'll see if he got there, and that'll be the final play of the third quarter as time ticks out. So a lot of big plays in the third quarter, and at the end of three quarters of play, the score is the Cincinnati Bengals 28, the Kansas City Chiefs 19. We'll be right back after these messages from your local state. Watch his team challenged on occasion behind twice in this game. They've rallied and taken a nine-point lead as Isaiasin looks for a first down home run. He's going to Eddie Brown, and it's broken up at the 19-yard line. They have done a great job of covering Eddie Brown all day. That time, J.C. Pearson. He's been targeted all day, Pearson, starting for the injured Kevin Ross. He's done a great job. You certainly can't fall to any part of this defensive backfield. This ball is in the air a long time. J.C. Pearson is right there. To bother Eddie Brown enough so that he can't make the catch. Cool. The Chiefs had two major areas, as you know, Trump, they wanted to correct today. One, they just wanted to stop turning the ball over in the scoring zone. They haven't done that, although they've had to settle for field goals often. And they wanted to establish a running game. They certainly have done that. 131 yards rushing today. 
Here's a handoff now for the Bengals as Woods takes it on second and long and doesn't get much. Second and ten carries good for just a yard. They also were concerned about time of possession. They're winning that statistic. Sam White, let's watch the offensive line again. 90, come right straight up out of his stance. He's an easy target. But actually, great job done by 59 Hawkins and 56 Dino Hackett to trip up Icky Woods for very little gain. Bringing up third down and about eight. Kansas City's one chance with a big interception here, a turnover. Mike Haynes, the great cornerback for the Raiders, says the only way you'll rattle Esiason is if you get to him and hit him, and the Chiefs have been able to do that. Here's a throw and a strike. Third down throw for a first down. Albert Lewis makes the tackle as Chris Collinsworth makes an 11-yard reception. His first catch of the day gets the Bengals four down. He hasn't caught many this year for Cincinnati. Started the season injured, had a pulled hamstring. Tim McGee came on. That's just the seventh catch that Collinsworth has made so far this year. 13.40 to play in the game. Esiason and the Bengals up 28 to 19. Formation now. Two tight ends. And it looks like two tight ends, a wide receiver. Brooks. Gets the carry, and he's down across the 45-yard line, close to the 44. James Brooks gets almost six yards. Now, this is where Kansas City really has trouble. When they don't score a lot of points, and they're down in the second half of a football game, they can't really stop their opponent to get the ball back, and Frank Gans is well aware of that. If they're up and leading, and he believes that they can... They can do a pretty good job defensively against people when they're trying to throw it. But when they're running it, that's when Kansas City's defense at a tremendous disadvantage. Second and five. Well, and a catch. That's the tight end, Riggs, who puts his head down and takes it to the 35-yard line. The Bengals have a first down. Did you see J.C. Pearson try to rip that ball away? Jack Del Rio is the man who finally makes the tackle. J.C. Pearson knowing that the Kansas City team needs a turnover now. Trying to strip that ball away from Jim Riggs. Meets up with a big outside linebacker, Andy Hawkins of the Kansas City Chiefs. First down carry was good for just two yards. Second and eight Bengals, as they now are working on the clock. Down to 11.30 and running. God, this was a wreck. They hand it to the up back. And Hawkins and Woods hit shoulder to shoulder, and Hawkins wins that one. A pickup of about half a yard. It was interesting, as you know, Trump, in the first half, the Chiefs had such a dominance in time of possession. Bengals have taken over that area in the second half. Reverse. Eddie Brown. He's caught. Now he's away, and now he's in trouble and down for a loss on the play. Back to the 39-yard line. Boy, if Eddie Brown could get back over to this side, Neil Smith makes the tackle. But if he gets back over to this side, there's nobody there. He may waltz in for a touchdown, but Neil Smith... The rookie defensive end from Nebraska did a great job of staying at home. Canada Brooks, who hands it to Eddie Brown, and then Neil Smith is right there. Now outside 54, Colfield is no one. Sam White just said we want to get the ball to Eddie Brown any way we can, just get it in his hands. Reverse didn't work. Now in third and 14, Messiahson will take a look downfield. Blitz. Long ball, Eddie Brown loses it at the 18-yard line. Very nearly a big connection, but it's incomplete. Great defense. Albert. Albert Lewis was the man who went up with Eddie Brown and stripped the ball as he came down. That ball was caught. Eddie Brown had that ball in his hands. Now the Bengals get good time for a size to throw it here. Eddie Brown at the top of the screen. 
He catches his ball. And then Albert Lewis knocks it away. Great play, Kansas City defense. Look, he's got that ball. And then it's knocked away. Gifford Taylor is back deep now for Kansas City. Scott Cohag ready to punt the ball. Head collegially nearby Kansas State, a high punt. But Taylor lets hop and it takes a jump into the end zone, and so it comes out to the 20. There the Chiefs will go on offense first and 10, down by 9 with 10.07 to play in the game. Excitement. And by Apple Computer, giving you the power to be your best in home, school, and business. The Bengals moving the ball with that diverse offense of theirs, but now they come up short and Kansas City takes over, down by nine, but the Chiefs have to hit big plays with 10.07 to go. Bird as the play is whistled dead by a marker before the snap of the ball. That graphic that just showed the time of possession, even though Cincinnati has had the ball a lot longer. Ball start prior to the snap, number 77 offense. Still first down. That's just the fourth penalty of the, of the day, but but still that that time graphic. Still, Kansas City leads by almost 10 minutes in total possession. Offensive line of Kansas City hurt by injury now, but it is full of blue chip players. All together, they have not played like it. As you see the Eagles come back to take a one point lead. There's the overall time of possession, first and second half. DeBerg takes a look downfield. There's a throw and a catch as he gets the ball to Carlos Carson. And Carson's ahead to the 26-yard line. A first and 15 play, and the gain is good for 10. Almost about 11. It'll be second down and four. Those crossing patterns, that tackle made by Joe Kelly, and those crossing patterns have been open all day long. And Paul Palmer back coming to the sideline. He's limping. DeBerg with plenty of time to throw. Watch the way Joe Kelly Kelly throws him down kind of grabs him throws him tries to strip the ball away. Herman Hurd tries the Bengal defense to the dismay again of the sense of the Kansas City fans who are looking for the pass offense. Zayasin and DeBerg DeBerg with excellent numbers today the number one passer in the league is with substantially less passing yardage. Well, an interesting thing about this Kansas City defense, they haven't allowed a 300-yard passing performance this year. Right. They're not going to allow it again today. That's pretty remarkable for a team that's 1-8-1. And, and they've allowed the high-scoring Bengals no passing touchdowns today. Given up only six TD passes in 11 games have the Chiefs. And here's a throw to Herman Hurd on third and short. He's ahead for a first down. Solomon Wilcox, 41, really hammered Hurd. Ray Horton was on the back end of the tackle, and Wilcox got him right across the head. This is the price you pay for running crossing patterns. You're generally running into someone's area, and that time Wilcox rung his bell. Herman Hurd, who made the first down reception for Kansas City, is still down. He was hit, perhaps, by the knee of Solomon Wilcox inadvertently as he moved up to make the tackle. Looks like two hits, one by the forearm or the shoulder, and then his knee, Don. But he's uh, somewhere else yep. right now, although he's up on his feet. Ray Horton grabs the back end, and Wilcox really levels him on the top end. 8.32 to play in the game as Wilcox with that Darth Vader look. He's been a good player out of Colorado in his second year. A lot of those guys are going to that shield. There's Paul Brown. That shield is being used. Wilcox got, he got poked in the eye last week against Pittsburgh. And in using that shield, it's a great protector. The only thing they have to do is keep it clean in the rain and in the snow. I'm not sure it really helps, but you can see Eric Thomas also has it. I think they hit him with wipers on him also. <laughs> so does Herman Hurd. He has one. It didn't help. A little battery operated wiper. Good idea. Why don't you invent that? Uh, 
First down and 10 for the Kansas City Chiefs, who trail the Bengals 28 to 19. The owner of this enterprise in Kansas City. Throw, tip ball, incomplete at the 40. Very nearly an interception. It was Emil Harry who let that ball get through his hands. No, I take it back. It was Carlos Carson, 88. Quick huddle here by Kansas City. Taking a pace from Cincinnati's playbook. Second down and 10. There's a throw and a ball at the 43-yard line. Incomplete. Joe Kelly made the hit on Carlos Carson to free the ball. This year, the Chiefs have made a couple of key coaching changes. Last year, Homer Smith was their offensive coordinator. He's gone, and George Sefcik, who coached with Infante, the offense of the Bengals when they went to the Super Bowl. It's George Sefcik, he's running the offense. Rod Rust, defensive coordinator of the Patriots when they went to the Super Bowl three years ago against the Bears, is running the Chiefs' defense. That's one of the problems this team has. The offense is running its third offense in three years. Last year, Homer Smith. The year before that, John Makovic. DeBerg looks, throws, incomplete. Will Katz came up, very nearly had a play on the ball. That brings up fourth and ten, and the punting unit has to come out now for Kansas City with 7.54 to play. Bengals will get the ball, and they'll try to run it at the Chiefs. Tim Crumry, good pressure on DeBerg that time. And Gans looking at this, his team going one, nine, and one. Not discouraged. He says, we're not a long way away. Well, Troy Aikman is the prize in this year's draft, and they're the leading candidate to get on the quarterback for UCLA. The second-rated player in all the combines is an offensive tackle, a 300-pounder from Michigan State, Tony Manderich. The linebackers are rated very high. Derek Thomas of Alabama, Broderick Thomas of Nebraska. Ira Hillary runs the punt back, and markers are down. Ira Hillary on the return. There's a penalty on the play. Wide receiver from Oklahoma State, Hartley Dykes, another Al Toon performer. We'll go high in the draft. That flag is going to be against Cincinnati. The 49-yard punt and a 10-yard re return is going to be called back. The illegal block in the back. I think they're going to call it on Ricky Dixon, 29. The illegal block during the return. Number 27 receiving team. First down. All right, take it back. It's not 29. It's Barney Bussey, 27. So a break in action here at Kansas City. We'll be back in a moment. Paul Palmer has turf toe. They've taped it up. He's going to try to play. You see the roster breakdown. Nice that the Bengals have all those first-round draft choices, but they don't show up until after training camp is over the last several years. That is the truth. Virtually everyone holds out to late in training camp. The Bengals with a nine-point lead in the fourth quarter. Go to the run and turning it upfield, but not very far is Dickie Woods who runs head on into Andy Hawkins, the outside linebacker from Texas A&I, getting his first start today. Well, Kansas City has figured that play out. Cincinnati's run that play a great deal. There's no protection in the backfield, and you see Andy Hawkins come from off the line of scrimmage right on the corner of the offense, and that is a picture-perfect tackle. That's a loss of about a half a yard. Kansas City still needs that big turnover. Looking for an errant pass or one that's tipped. Ron Cherry has intercepted Esiason once today. Chiefs have not turned it over. Boomer on the run. Turning it upfield, he's caught from behind by Neil Smith. It was the second player picked in the draft out of Nebraska. A huge and obviously very fast defensive end. Now, I would think people in Cincinnati would shudder when they see Boomer Esiason and sprint out there like this and he's going to run it. Neil Smith with outstanding foot speed for his size. He's 6'4", 6'5", 260. He just pulls Boomer down like he's nothing. But it is a nice pickup of about eight yards. So third and two, two and a half. Third and about two and a half it is indeed. 
Boomer looks, he swings it out, and it's incomplete, and the Chiefs are going to get the ball back with 6.15 to play, trailing Cincinnati 28-19. Tonight, it's Mickey's 60th birthday special, but where's the mouse? Roger Rabbit, Goofy, and stars from NBC shows join in the hunt on the magical world of Disney, followed by Family Ties, and you'll see more of Michael J. Fox in the network television premiere of Back to the Future. That's all tonight, only on NBC. John Bengals right here have to be very careful about having a punt block. This punt team is not protected. It's punted very well. Kansas City knows that's the way to turn the game around. And it's blocked into the end zone. Free ball. The safety. Two points for the Chiefs. And it's now a 28-21 game. And Cincinnati will have to free kick. They did not recover it in the end zone for a touchdown. Albert Lewis got it. Well, you had that call. Albert Lewis. They played the Chiefs two years ago. In 86, that's the way they got to the playoffs. Deron Cherry comes up with the recovery. Lewis comes from the outside. The ball is bouncing around. Mark Logan does it. Well, I'll tell you what, that's very close to being recovered in the end zone. That's very close. The Chiefs are signaling it's a touchdown. We're going to watch again as they are in the official replay booth. Albert Lewis has made an absolute living not only covering wide receivers but blocking punts. The official was in excellent position. He was right there looking down at it. That's the second time a punt has been blocked against Cincinnati. There's a good look. Let's look again. Duran Cherry realizes the ball After is... After further review of instant replay, the play stand. Safety. Cherry, Part of the ball apparently was out of the end zone. The official was right there looking down on it. You have to go with that. The problem is our cameras are not at the back line, and you really do you lose that depth of perception as to whether or not the ball is over the end line, on the end line, or when actual possession of the football took place but the net result is we got a chance here for a tie game in overtime Chiefs now trail by seven and the Bengals must punch so the excitement level picks up as now we have 606 to play very nearly a touchdown by the special teams play of since uh, the Kansas City Chiefs blocking a Bengal punt. Bears blowing out the Redskins at Washington. New England extends its lead to eight over the Jets. Indianapolis en route to another victory. Philadelphia holding on at Pittsburgh. San Diego a big underdog, a leader over the Falcons at Atlanta. Here, Cincinnati's lead is down to seven, and the Chiefs are going to get the ball in good field position. A free kick from the 20. Full Hague and the punter. Beautifully hit ball, very high. It will be returned, though. Kitrick Taylor runs it back, crosses the 30, and he gets to the 35 yard line. There the Kansas City Chiefs go on offense with 5.56 to play and Cincinnati in the lead 28-21. Now, now I think the injury to Paul Palmer is very key for Kansas City. He's on the sideline with a turf toe and I do not see him making any attempt whatsoever to get in the game. The Berglade getting his helmet. Palmer's on the bench over there limping and limping pretty badly. There he is right hey, there. That's a tough injury that turf toe. Jack Lambert had ended his career. Absolutely. Archie Griffin played with the Cincinnati Bengals. Almost ended, ended his career. He had surgery on it. Giants first team all pro tight end Mark Favaro. He's had a recurring first toe problem he can't shake. Okoye on first down runs at the Bengals and gets to about the 38 yard line. The Central Division standings at the outset of Sunday number 11. The Bengals holding to a one-game lead over the Oilers, a two-game advantage on Cleveland. Pittsburgh not in the running. Chiefs right back to the line of scrimmage. Here's upcoming games. Pittsburgh at Cleveland on the 20th. Pittsburgh at Houston. Huge game coming up the 27th of November at Cincinnati when the Bills meet the Bengals. 
Oh, and a catch at the 44-yard line. It'll be about two yards short of a first down. Carson makes the catch. Reggie Williams makes the tackle. There have been receivers open all over the field today. Chiefs have to get in the end zone and kick the extra point to possibly send this game to overtime. They won't be trying any more field goals. And he's free when he's down uh -oh. to seven. He didn't make it. Third and short. No, he didn't get there. He's going to be short. Well, this is two down area anyway. Frank Gans. There'll be no question whatsoever. He'll go for it on fourth down. Replay look as Herman Hurd weaves into the Bengals defense, takes a head-on shot from Solomon Wilcox and is knocked down at the 46-yard line. Woo, it's going to be an inch away. Last time they needed this, they went over the top with a QB sneak. Chiefs have all three timeouts left. 4.29 remaining in the game. Lamar Hunt is out of Kansas City coach Frank Gans. We're going to review everything after the season. In fairness to Gans, this is his second year. He's had new offensive and defensive coordinators each year. This team is not far away. They've been close every week. They're close against this week. The bird calls his own number, and I don't know if he got there. It depends. Here comes the linesman in. It depends totally on the spot. I yeah. don't think he got there. We've got one linesman marking it a little more generously than the other linesman. They're going to have to measure. Start shoving after the play and had a good time to get called for a personal foul. Irv Eaton and David Fulcher. And that one referee protecting that football. They have not yet measured to see if it's a first down. Remember that personal foul call against Jack Del Rio of the Chiefs in the second quarter. It gave the Bengals a first down. They subsequently scored a touchdown. At this moment, they lead by seven. This is going to be very, very close, Don. He didn't get there. The spot is the difference. Well, he got it by the... On the spot, he got it, but it doesn't look like he got it there. He didn't get much. The Chiefs keep the drive alive. Shortly, those of you in Cleveland and Houston will be leaving to watch Cleveland at Denver and Houston at Seattle. We'll keep you informed of this game throughout the rest of the afternoon on NFL Live. Long ball. Man is out there, and it's tipped away on a beautiful defensive effort by Eric Thomas, a second-year cornerback from Tulane. There's been some terrific cornerback coverage in this game, both ways. Intended for Stefan Page to Berg again with great pass protection. Plenty of time to look deep down the field. The very end of the play, Ward Thomas is just able to get his hand on the ball. It's interesting, Trump. The Chiefs have been one of the poorest teams in protecting their passer, allowing 36 sacks in the first 10 games. But the Bengals have been able to sack to Berg today. Second down and 10 for Steve DeBerg from the shotgun. Throw and a catch down to the 48-yard line. It'll be about three yards short of the first down. And a Bengal injury. down. It's also a Bengal injury. Someone's down on the field, and the flag is too. Jason Buck was shaken up. A pass rusher holding his left knee. Holding number 22 defense. They got Wilk, and they got Eric Thomas holding for Cincinnati, so that'll be a defensive penalty and a first down for the Chiefs, who trail by seven. Yeah. 
Bengals basically had control of this football game. And of course, the kickoff return, 98 yards by Stanford Jennings, gave him control of the game. And then they gave it back, that is control of the game, back to Kansas City on the block punt that was a safety. This is a place where Cincinnati's had great trouble winning. They are 0-3 in the regular season since 1980. It's Carl Mock, the offensive line coach. Oiler fans remember him. He wants to get out there. This is the first time in seven weeks that the Chiefs have scored over 17 points. The bird stands in, loops the ball. It's completed to James Jackson down to the 40-yard line. First down play. It's good for about nine yards. Very close to a first down. Game clock a ticking down inside. Three minutes to play. Leo Barker and Eric Thomas with the tackle. And Don, I think if Paul Palmer is healthy, he's running that pattern. I'm not saying Saxon is, Saxon is bad, but Palmer's a little quicker than Saxon. Now we have an official timeout. Well, I spot the ball. Second down and less than a yard. There's Palmer on the bench. Use his services in this drive. He went out earlier in the fourth quarter with turf toe. On second and short, DeBerg stands in the pocket, throws it out, pattern it off the hand of Emil Harry at the 31 yard line. Well, that brings up third and less than a yard. There is no question that all day long they're picking on Eric Thomas because every time the ball is thrown, the guy in defense is Eric Thomas. He's allowed some big plays, he's also made some big plays today. And this one just thrown a little too far for Carlos Emil Harry to make the catch. Eric Thomas has had a busy day. The Chiefs mired in a five-game losing streak. Down at the bottom of the one loss standings. One, eight, and one. Coming in but playing Cincinnati all the way. Four quarters of tough football for the Bengals to come out of here with a win. They're leading by seven. Here's a throw and the catch and a first down to the 30-yard line. DeBerg standing in with a perfect tight spiral to the numbers of 88. An 11-yard gain to Carlos Carson. And the game clock ticks down, as you see, to 2.20 in running. <laughs> Get this playoff before the two-minute warning. The Berg on first down throws another strike. Herman Hurd is down to the 15-yard line. As we're down to the two-minute warning. A 14-yard gain on the play, and the Chiefs needing a touchdown are close. National Football League rules require that we present away games starting with the opening kickoff to stations in the team's home area. So viewers in Cleveland and Houston will be leaving this game in a few minutes for a telecast involving your home team. However, we'll continue to bring you reports of this game to keep you up to date. This is Don Crickey with Bob Trumpy at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, where as you see, Sam White's Bengals hold to a seven-point lead. Another extended drive trump by the Chiefs. Tenth play by Kansas City, 69 yards. Here's the story of the game, I think. Kansas City came into this ball game having great difficulty protecting their quarterback and allowed 36 sacks. None today. Steve DeBerg is 21 of 36, 276, and a touchdown. Another spectacular drive by Kansas City. In the middle of this zone defense by Cincinnati has been very vulnerable. But this is where Kansas City has struggled. They've been in this spot three times today and only gotten three field goals. Let's watch Stefan Page, number 83, going wide to the left. To remember, down close before from 17 yards out to Bird. Lofted one to Page in the end zone for the touchdown. Bird at the top of your screen. Put the player up. Warner plays way off him. The Bird looks. He's going to get sacked. Down at the 28 yard line. First of the day. David Grant comes from the outside. That's a sack inside two minutes, so the clock stops, and then Kansas City on top of that takes a timeout. Some final scores from the NFC. Tampa Bay has just defeated Detroit, coming from 10 points behind. 
Burt better move to get it in within the allotted time. He does. He looks. He throws. He makes the connection to Carlos Carson, and he's down to the 15-yard line. Carson's hurt. He's up. Carlos Carson is up, and he wants to stay in the game. As you see, the game clock winding down to 135 and running. Chiefs into alignment without a hook. Chiefs have two timeouts left. Bengals have three. Kansas City has to have a touchdown and an extra point to tie the game. The bird looks. Another throw open, man. Interference and the five. They're not going to call it. They really had position. The Chiefs protesting vehemently. Emil Harry. And now a marker comes out of official's pocket. That has to be an interference call. Collision from. That has to be an interference call. David Fulcher was the man who was back there and I believe made the contact. It looks like it may be first and goal Kansas City again. Well, I don't know. You look at it again. That's very close. Is that ball catchable? I think it was catchable. If he hadn't been so do I. stopped in his pattern, it was absolutely catchable. That's the only reason why I wonder why the officials are talking about it. Is the ball catchable? Well, a defender can hold his position if the guy has not really tried to pick him off. Sure, that ball is catchable. But at that speed, it's hard to tell exactly where the contact took place. Jerry Seaman and his crew looking at it, looking at it long and hard. Here's the call. Pass interference. Number 33. Hold on, David Fulcher. I think that's the very obvious call to make. First and goal. The only thing that Cincinnati's got to be concerned about here is how late that flag came in. It was almost as if Cooper could pick it up where the contact is. Watch his head. Yeah, there's contact. There's no question there's contact. But the flag was so late. First and goal from the one yard line. Latoya gets the ball. On the goal line, and he's in. Touchdown, Kansas City, with 111 left to play. Just their second touchdown rushing of the season. But Kansas City will have to kick it off. Presuming they make the extra point. And Esiason and the best offense in the league will have about 71 seconds to get in field goal range. They scored from 71 yards with 130 to go at the end of the first half. Akoya does a great job this time of slipping off the pile. Just gets that ball in the end zone. Just the second rushing touchdown the Chiefs have scored this year. Without his shoe. Nick Lowry. Automatic. He's 12 for 12 on extra points this season. He's 17 for 18 on field goal drives. Extra point is good, and the game is tied. 1-11 to play, and they're up and cheering in Kansas City. In the 11th week of a season, that has been anything but something to cheer about. This is the one play that got the Kansas City Chiefs back in the ball game. Albert Lewis blocks it. It ends up being a safety. Deron Cherry recovers it. And then Cincinnati must punt on the free kick after the safety. And the Chiefs take it in to score and tie the game at 28 all. Cincinnati 0-2 on the road in their last two games. And now, the end of the first half, Kansas City went with a prevent defense and Cincinnati went right down the field. Now Rod Russ, the defensive coordinator, is in a tough spot here. The Bengals also have a long-distance field goal kicker in Lee Johnson. They also have the wind at their back. Now, each coach right. is That's inventory. a very good point. They've got the wind at their back, and it's been substantial. Each coach is inventorying what we've got here and what we don't have. There's a Koya on the touchdown. He just gets that ball in the end zone. 
you can't give up a long return here. That was a 12. There's Rod Russ, the defensive coordinator. 12 plays, 64 yards, 4 minutes and 45 seconds. You want to make sure you don't give up a long return here. Cincinnati has all three timeouts left. Three ball. Whoa! Yes, the Chiefs have the ball with 105 to play, and the best field goal kicker, certainly one of the best in the NFL, waiting to come in again. Logan, a free agent from Kentucky, has a forgettable moment. Albert Lewis has a great one as he gets the ball for the Chiefs. And right now, the ball stands at the 27. That would be a 44-yard attempt. Nick Lowry is four for four in 40-yard attempts coming into this game. We mentioned earlier, Kansas City constantly trying to strip that ball loose. It's James Saxon who strips it loose. Ball on the ground. Can't tell who recovers it. They don't need a yard for Nick Lowry to make this field. Albert Lewis recovered it. Mike Stock, special teams coach, talking with Mark Logan. Tough moment for Mark. But now the Chiefs perhaps in a position to finally win a game after going five weeks on the lost team. Akoye down to the 27-yard line. 58 seconds to play. And the clock has stopped. He's already kicked, what, four today? Yep. <laughs> score Philadelphia has edged the Steelers 27 to 26 on a last second field goal the numbers you see the lack of yards by the wide receivers of Cincinnati McCoy just went over 100 yards too just 15 carries it looked like the knockout punch is put on and put on after Kansas City scored to get close the suing kickoff to Stanford Jennings was returned 98 yards for a touchdown. Look at the numbers of DeBerg, who has to be the most valuable player of this game. Last time the Kansas City Chiefs won a football game, Steve DeBerg was the quarterback against Denver here in Arrowhead. Kansas City has one job here, protect the football. They'd like to get closer. Back to the run, Herman Hurd takes it inside the 25-yard line. The 40-yard attempt from where the ball is positioned now as the clock continues to tick on down, 45 seconds in running. Chiefs want to risk as few handoffs probably Trump as they can because they have such a sure shot kicker. You know, I'm surprised they don't go for it on this one on third down. Yeah, in case they get a bad snap, they get yeah. another chance. Cincinnati not calling any timeouts. Yeah, letting the clock expire. I fall right down on it here. Give it to Akoye one more time. And he takes it down to the 22-yard line. Now it becomes a 38-yard kick. And with six seconds left, Nick Lowry comes out to try what could be the decider and there's not many guys you'd want more than Nick Lauer to put it up for you at this point. You got that right. If he misses, we go to overtime. If he makes it, there's finally something to cheer about in Kansas City. The snapper is Adam Wingner. The holder, as you can see, Bill Kenny, and Lowry's already kicked four today. This is basically a chip shot for him. He gets way back from where he's going to kick the ball, looks at the wind angles. As I mentioned earlier, you told me before the game, it is a tricky wind today. 39-yard attempt from where the ball will be held. The distance is no problem. The wind could be, although it seems to have died down. There's not much action in the flags high above the stadium here at Arrowhead. 
The game on the line. 28 to 28 with six seconds to play. Lowry is set. Ball is on the way. It's good. And with two seconds left, the Kansas City Chiefs on courageous play by a lot of people, particularly Lowry, unbending under the pressure, hits his fifth field goal of this game. He's hit everything he's kicked. And the Chiefs, down by a lot, have rallied now to take a 31-28 lead. And all the Bengals have hoped for is another kickoff return for a touchdown. Tough choice on MVP today. I'm going to take Nick Lowry. I'm with you. Five field goals. Former Cincinnati Bengal for two weeks. He was released. The Bengals kept Jim Breach. Frank Gans was the special teams coach. And he now it's time for the Budweiser Most Valuable Player Award. Today's MVP is Nick Lowry of the Kansas City Chiefs. Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all the MVP selected in today's games. Boy, does that throw the AFC Central into a tizzy now. And the Bengals, while they still have a superior record, have not been a superior team over the last five weeks. They've lost three of their last five games after that 6-0 start. And three road losses in a row. New England, Cleveland, and now Kansas City, unless some miracle happens. New England just edged the New York Jets 14-13. There is so much on the line here in Kansas City with what happens the rest of this season. The top management of the team, the coaching staff. Here is the onside kick. James Brooks is back, and they let it get by. And James Brooks with the ball. He's got to go all the way, and he's not going to go anywhere. And it's over, and Kansas City comes back to win. The Bengals fall to eight and three, depending on what the Oilers do later today. They're starting right now at Seattle, and the Browns are going against the Broncos now in Denver. This could be some division. It is some division. Be going down to about the fourth tiebreaker by the end of this thing. Bengals have lost three games this season and basically given two away. One in New England, and this one to Kansas City. But you have to take your head off to Kansas City. After that kickoff return by Stanford Jennings, they did not fold, they did not pout, they did not do anything. Exactly. They came back with the blocked punt. It took the steam out of Cincinnati. That last drive to score the touchdown was impressive. And they end up winning. Well, it's just unbelievable the bad luck they've had. As we pointed out, Gans has been saying all week to his team, we're exactly where the Bengals were a year ago. And they were 4-11, and losing seven games by less than a touchdown. This year, Cincinnati's come back. They have one of the best records in the NFL. Kansas City with three one-point losses this year, six losses by less than a touchdown. And today, down by a large margin, they came back to win it. And this was the turning point. The Bengals were up by nine. Albert Lewis blocks the punt. It's recovered out of the end zone by Deron Cherry. Ends up being a safety. It's a nine-point swing on that blocked punt. The fumble on the kickoff return by Mark Logan. This is the touchdown after that, after that drive. Stay tuned for the second half of our NBC doubleheader. This is Don Crickey with Bob Truffy in Kansas City where the Chiefs have beaten the Bengals 31 to 28. 